I would like to call this meeting into order. Mary, can I please have the roll? Kyle Peck here. here. Hillary Costa here. Gianna Auger here. Jordan Day still here. Travis Escobar here. Ryan Bedcourt here. Rebecca Allen here. Nathan Bissell here. Caitlin Burke here. And Andre Camacho. Shannon Carlson here. Melissa Cheeto here. Tyler Dean here. Marcy Diaz here. Ashley Goldberg. Justin Gosselin here. Timothy Horder here. Laura Howard here. Thomas Lima here. Kevin Martin here. Nick Rose? Here. Robert Sanchez? Robert Santuri? Here. Joseph Sherry? Here. Tyler Smith? Edward Taylor? Here. Gary Penfield? Here. Scott Kane? Here. Namita Sarawagi? Here. Mark Gunning? Here. Mark Paolucci? Barry Nickerson? Here. Can we all please rise the Pledge of Allegiance?
can be reviewed directly by the ACSF. Um, in addition, uh, what about the numerous amount of part-time or less commuter students that want a little extra money from their college experience uh, and are punished if they have the aptitude to make it to an executive board position? They are forced to pay student activity fees as well. Is this really fair? To bring up an additional case, isn't opposing an academic act by student-run facilities like the Aston Who are you to judge the academics for other students? It should be a college bylaw, not SDGs, um, that limits students' involvement. I know this is about being paid for the work you do rather than being allowed to actually participate in general, but by passing this act, especially without amendment, you are increasing the ever-growing apathy a lot of students at this campus have for student action organizations. Why not instead create a committee of organizations to judge other organizations? Make our parliament truly run by the students for the students and less judge the rest of our peers if in fact they need to be judged. Uh, finally, my last point is directed at the leaders of our fine student government. I understand that a few of you will be graduating soon and want to leave behind a legacy, but to hastily try to push any bylaw through without first, um, without thought first, will create a work legacy for your ship itself. One in which you are not seen as a pioneer searching to end or expect apathy, but an attacker of the values and community that organizations create and spread not only in Rhode Island College community, but the surrounding areas of Rhode Island as well. I thank you for your time and the great pleasure of you allowing me to speak in defense of something I believe in. Thank you, John. Tim Bolton. I know you just came in, but you're actually not late. Okay. You actually came in at the most perfect time. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll give you a moment to breathe. If yeah, you need one. But uh, John, thank you for your comments. I mean, John, sorry. Yeah, John, John, thank you for coming. Uh, yeah, obviously, I allowed you to go past the two minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah no problem. But thank you for your interest in that. Uh, Tim, do you have to Yeah. So, first of all, I'd like to apologize for being out of breath. I just ran away from uh, New Paul. So, good evening. My name is Tim Bolton. I'd like to personally thank Student Community Government for allowing me the opportunity to express my thoughts and feelings <coughs> on the proposed dedication to Academic Success Act in tonight's upper form. <coughs> I am uh, proud to call myself a student. My number one priority is to be a role model for future student leaders. Throughout my time here at Rick, I've been a whew, senior resident assistant for two years, been a resident assistant for an additional two years, served as president of Resident Student Association, founded a student leadership organization, served on various committees, and still had time to work 15 hours a week and most importantly, go out and enjoy myself. Although there are parts of my identity that have certainly changed throughout since my freshman year, there's always been one part of me that has never changed something that has always been constant. That's my identity as a student. There comes a time during every college experience when an opportunity arises and it would be downright foolish not to take it. Tonight is one of those times. Tonight will mark a monumental decision for the future of student leadership on this campus. The Dedication to Academic Success Act must be approved at tonight's parliament meeting. It's a crucial piece of legislation that will only positively affect the student body for years to come. Unfortunately, there are a group of vocal influential students who have every right to be adamantly against this bill. They are claiming that it won't be successful, that it isn't right, and it isn't fair. <clears throat> to those students, I say this. Wake up. You have a great responsibility on this campus. You are a student leader. Let me say that again, a student leader. As much as we like to disagree, school should always be our number one priority. Even though I don't know the fine details of this act, this is what I do know. In order to keep your stipend, you need to A, keep a 2.0 GPA, and two, maintain half-time enrollment. If you don't meet those qualifications, you have to fit into four to eight study hours with SDG to receive the stipend. Even though there are more details and parameters to the act, which I'm sure there are, when it comes down to the bread and butter of it, all you need to do is maintain a GPA that is required of you to graduate. Are people really complaining about a 2.0 GPA? I understand that some students might not be academically inclined as other students, and that is fine. Student community government is committed to helping those students through the Student Leadership Advisor Program. This is not an argument of intelligence, but rather an argument of leadership. Therefore, I, and probably a lot of other students on this campus, have a problem with a student leader who can barely keep their academics in order, receiving a stipend for being on a committee that meets once a week, or holding a highly coveted executive board position. Uncle Ben from Spider-Man put it best. With great power comes great responsibility. I challenge you all to be your own Peter Parker. You are a student leader on this campus for a reason. You saw potential in this campus. You want to make a change for the better. 
This is the reason why we do all the crazy stuff we do, for the betterment of this institution. Please, I'm asking you to try and realize the principles of which your argument is rooted. We shouldn't be endorsing an idle academic policy when it comes to student leadership. We have the opportunity to shape, mold, and create a stronger community here at Rick. Take the chance and approve the act before it's too late. Thank you for listening and go on career. Thank you. Oh, sorry, speak, uh, speaker, sorry. Um, Kyle Becky, would you like to speak first? Uh, our first speaker is Jerry Sommer. He's going to talk to us about apogee. So some of us who live in the residence halls know what apogee is. Um, so I encourage you to ask questions. All <coughs> uh, My name is Jerry Sommer. I'm with the apogee. Uh, we just want a little bit more student involvement, uh, kind of a way to reach out to students who aren't actually calling us and letting us know if there are any issues or problems. Um, so I, I just recently got promoted to a full-time staff here at, uh, at RIC, uh, even though we are a vendor. Um, and I was just basically looking to see if anyone had any questions, comments, or concerns I could pass on to my resident or the, Is there a uh, list of problem representatives that would like to ask questions? At least on Representative Rose. Okay, that, Representative Rose. All right, thank you. Um, I got one question. My, my constituents uh, who are complaining of problems in, in Thorpe, like, uh, what I, which I found out from one of my constituents, who's also a member of WXIN who has a radio show, that there is a mold problem in, 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 what, in Thorpe Hall, in, in Sweet L, I believe. Uh, would, would there be a, 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 any type of work that you guys can do to resolve the problem? Nick, this is about the, uh, the Wi-Fi. Oh, not oh the, the Wi-Fi. Oh, the sorry. Wi -Fi. sorry. Do you have a question about the Wi-Fi? Oh, actually, whoa, whoa. What would would be expensive for for uh for the Wi-Fi in the residence halls or? We do have a, a free package available for all the students who are residents. Okay, and I I like to apologize for asking the wrong question. Okay, I don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, no more questions for me. Okay, Representative Howard. Um, hi, I represent uh, Weber Hall, and um, <clears throat> just like a lot of things that I've heard, which is like a lot of people just can't get into the internet. Um, somebody that I. I'm very good friends with has not been able to get internet for um, like a week, and this is just something that I've heard like consistently. So like, is there anything that you'd be able to do to make it so that we can actually have like good? <laughs> I'm here uh, Monday through Friday at New Hall. Um, I'm actually I was I was given an office by uh, Res Light. Very nice of them. Um, I'm on the first floor, right near the uh, conference room, right near the entrance. Um, I do welcome students to come by and, and say hi. Uh, we also have posters. In Lounge of every uh, dorm uh, with our 24/7 support line, and I, I would definitely suggest a, a phone call, an email, the live chat, um, all different ways to reach out to our, our tech support staff to help get online. Okay. Any further questions for our speaker? Okay. Uh, I like. Sorry, 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 treasure day. Um, I actually. This is a problem that I've experienced while being in New Hall. Um, that one of the one of my friends who lives in New Hall, while using Apogee or my ResNet on her um, laptop, she's not able to connect it also on her cell phone using the Wi-Fi in the dorms, and she's finding that to be a hard like an issue. Um, that way, she doesn't have to be on her laptop all the time. She can use it with, like her cell phone in her room. Doesn't need to have her laptop out, and she's finding that that connectivity is being an issue. Is there anything that you know that's a specific, like, that can be remedied, or? Of course. Okay, cool. Our, uh, our, the main login that you get to our, mm -hmm. our My ResNet is good for your computer. Okay. Any additional devices that you'd like to add, such as cell phones, PDAs, tablets, um, is best done through our website, myresnet.com. Okay. You log in, and we have an option to add uh, several additional devices um, to your computer. And that's all free? It's all free. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Representative Brown. Uh, thank you. Uh, what uh, will, will the Wi-Fi be like? Uh, will it work on like iPads, uh, 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 like uh, like iMac computers, or or uh, or like uh, Dell laptops and all that? All those devices. Okay. All right. President Beckett. Thank you. Um, I just have a question. A lot of residents. I live in New Hall. 
Um, a lot of residents uh, have approached me and asked about guest login. I guess there's been some problems if you have a guest like stay overnight and they want to log in their cell phone, they can't use their cell phone because there's no Wi-Fi. So I didn't know if that was a common problem that you had and people have just been approaching me about that. Okay. Um, I believe we have, uh, through our, our My Resident and You First Connect, mm -hmm. there's a way to create an account. Mm -hmm. And you are able to create a guest mm -hmm. account. Okay. Uh, a one day pass is free. And that's always available. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Representative Bessel. Um, one of my constituents who lives in Weber, she says it logs her phone off at least once a week and she has to log back in, I'm assuming. And that same problem as I think Treasurer Day said, The main login that you're given through the My ResNet is good for pretty much your computer. Yep. Um, what I'm sure your constituent is doing is using that same login for the phone. So when you log in on the phone, it's booting the computer off and vice versa. So by going through our website, My ResNet, and clicking Add Additional Devices, that should remedy that. All right, thank you. Yeah, yep. Any further questions for our speaker? All right, no further questions. Thank you for coming. Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. SCG president, 1977 you served? I have to say that, right? <laughs> <laughs> in, in 77 he was um, president of SCG, so he has history here. He also, was the he also was the president in the only other impeachment trial in the history of SCG besides the one that occurred a couple of years ago. But anyway, just a brief history on Mr. Turner. Um, the reason I asked him to come here today is because it's in regards to um, anger editorial and things that have been going on that um, I won't hide it that have involved Speaker Escobar and um, what I did was today I just I happened to walk by him sitting in Mary's office when which he usually is if anyone doesn't know he's in his her, her office during free period anytime there's a finance meeting and I saw him reading the anchor and the editorial piece and I went in and I sat down and I talked to him about the situation to try and get an objective point of view and also one that would be a point from uh, a legal standpoint or you know to find a, uh, any standing or anything like that because he can certainly put it into better language than I could um, because I think sometimes when people are invested or affiliated with the situation they make comments that are inherently biased and Terry's one who could really look at the situation objectively and what I asked him to come here for is to tell him exactly what he told me in the meeting with him today. Um, we, I shared my points of views on the situation. Um, he played devil's advocate, but he also saw how I felt the way that I felt and told me that um, I needed to, to you know, address it in my own way, um, but in a way that's appropriate. And um, I'm gonna yield the floor over to him to give his professional opinion on the situation because I really wanted to make sure that I cover all, covered all bases because if there's one thing that I'm personally not, it's not someone who acts irrationally or draws certain conclusions, but someone who likes to be prepared and do her homework. So with that, former president of SCG, Terry Turner. <laughs> you must all know that I was not the only one here in 1977. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Or a director, it could be someone who is an employee for 
SCGN. It could be someone who does some work in an independent contractor capacity, or it could be someone who serves in some sort of agency capacity for this organization, who in his or her individual capacity voices an opinion about an issue which is uh, important uh, to this body and the student uh, body in general. Those opinions these days are quite often uh, voiced on Facebook, apparently, as this one was, mm -hmm. sometimes in a newspaper article, an op-ed, an editorial piece, or a direct conversation. <coughs> when someone is a member of an organization, unless he identifies himself or herself as speaking for that organization, then that opinion cannot be taken as that of the organization. That person, be he or she an officer, member, director, employee, or whatnot, would have to specifically and explicitly identify that my opinion is that of this particular organization, whatever it uh, may be, whether uh, in my capacity as an officer, employee, or so on and so forth. So if you read an opinion that you have a particularly strong uh, reaction to, positive or negative, it should probably be taken uh, as that person's individual personal opinion and not that of the organization, unless that person specifically identifies it as such. So if there is an adverse uh, opinion or a negative response to uh, an opinion that someone else has made before we sort of jump the gun and uh, blame the organization, probably the first thing that needs to be clarified and I think that that's pretty easy to do. Is was this person the, the person speaking for the organization or just himself or herself? So that if there, uh, if there is a, uh, if you strongly agree or disagree, then you can deal with that person on a one-to-one -one individual basis. Especially if you disagree, then you can take that up with that person individually, rather than, let's say, directing your wrath to the organization. Now, someone who is a member of this body may very well have authority to speak for this body, <coughs> if given that authority, by this body. And that is really a matter, an internal matter between SCG Inc., uh, the offices, the people who work for it, and the people who are participating. <coughs> Even if someone has authority to speak for this group, unless that is specifically identified in, in an opinion, then it cannot be taken as that of the group. So if you have a particularly strong reaction about uh, an editorial, a uh, Facebook opinion that you may have read about DASA, because that appears to be the way the issue has uh, arisen from it, uh, before, again, you sort of uh, look to this body uh, as the, uh, let's say, author of that, it might be better to clarify at the beginning. Was that your opinion individually? Was that the opinion of SCG Inc.? Was that the opinion of Parliament? Did you have the authority to speak on behalf of Parliament? And then you can sort of uh, you know, take the next, uh, next step accordingly. So uh, that's basically a very brief discussion I have with the Hillary and a very brief discussion and a follow up almost passing in the hallway with President uh, Kyle. I hope that may help a little bit, maybe focus your energy, focus your attention where perhaps it uh, most appropriately uh, belongs and you might get the most constructive uh, discussion of it. So I hope that uh, addresses your concern. I Thank think you. that may be a, a little bit of a uh, helpful body for many of you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Yes, I did. Um, so, as far as this goes, some of you may think that this was a futile discussion to have and that this is something that we should have just let fall by the wayside, but the truth is, is that social media is a very powerful thing and I just want everyone to know that when you put something online, it's there forever and you don't know who sees it. And of course, I told, I had, I've had a personal conversation with Travis and I told him not to apologize for his beliefs because I would never ask anyone to apologize for how they believe because that's how he feels. But rather, just, I mean, as Terry explained, he didn't state that it was on behalf of the organization, but someone who was a two-time president and speaker, those who are affiliated with SCG or are student leaders or who are in the game, 
you know, know who he is and might make the connection subconsciously. So that's something that I wanted to address from a purely professional standpoint. And um, I'm ready to put this behind us because, quite frankly, I'd like to get back to doing what our job is and helping students. And I'm really excited to tell you guys about the Whipple Hall seating resolution update and the big traffic and parking legislation I collaborated with a bunch of members on. So with that, I'm going to kind of put a close to it as far as how I'm going to address it. Just know that it's ill-advised to uh, make such a comment, just make sure you guys, you know, think and use proper outlets to do so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vice President Costa. We'll move on to all uh, Representative Allen. I just want to say I don't agree with a single thing you said, but I agree with your right to say it. And I think we all need to remember that just because we don't agree with things don't doesn't mean that a person doesn't have a right to say it. That's what I wanted to say. Rep, thank you. Representative Martin. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I'm not sure really what was said. I don't know what was said. I'm sure I'm not the only one in this body that doesn't know what was said. So I feel kind of misinformed of what's going on. I just want to throw that out there. Thank you for the uh, speaker this morning. Uh, thank you. I don't know how to sort of get him on. <coughs> uh, about Is that the an anchor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a copy for you because I'm sending you my announcement. So if you could get it back to me, that'd be great. Treasure day, I see you next on the list, but I'll wait until you... No, I was just going to say that this isn't really the appropriate forum to be oh, talking about that. Um, that the appropriate forum to be talking about these issues is during issues of Parliament members, so if you guys want to keep your comments to yourself, in the meantime, we're going to follow Robert Rules of Order and Parliamentary Procedure. All right, we'll move forward then to Office of Announcements. President Kyle Beckett. Thank you. Um, my first announcement is that I had a very lengthy meeting with um, Vinny and Arthur over at Donovan Dining Center last week. Um, so you'll have a report on that meeting um, at the next parliament meeting, which is March 27th. And I was also corresponding with uh, Secretary Auger a little bit. Um, they really enlightened me. I had a lot of questions that I was just able to really candidly ask them, and they were very honest and open. Um, so I think it might be in our best interest to author some kind of like frequently asked questions article. Um, because it's, I feel like some people think that Donovan's some sort of mystery wrapped in an enigma, and it's really not the case. They're pretty open about things that go on there. Um, just, oh, while I'm doing this, I made a little side note to myself. Um, you'll notice on the end of the agenda, we have um, the Student Bill of Rights discussion. I only need 10 of these, because it's just, I don't want to waste this much paper. Um, if you have a student planner with you, please flip to that page. Do the best you can as far as sharing. Um, it, I didn't have an electronic copy, so I apologize for not getting that to you before the meeting. But if you can, just briefly look it over, and if you have a change, bring it up and we discuss it. Um, we did make changes last year with Vice President Bissell, but I don't believe that we ever submitted them. So um, I'm not sure if I remember exactly what we changed. So if somebody, somebody remembers and wants to bring that up, that will be awesome. Okay. Um, also, I'm going to make my weekly plug for the Student Alumni Association that I'm being charged with starting. If you're interested, let me know after the meeting. And also, um, we're trying to have a homecoming meeting sometime in the very near future so that we can plan ahead of time this year. Um, and let's see. The final thing I just want to say is, as Representative Martin is looking over the anchor, um, I know some people are kind of confused about what's happening. Just a brief overview is that some comments were made about DASA, which we're going to talk about tonight. Um, on Speaker Escobar's Facebook, and there was a, a back and forth, and several people have, you know, corresponded and added their input. Um, so I wrote something myself, much like what John and Tim have written for us um, and, and delivered to us. And I felt like, as the president, as your CEO, as your leader, I felt like I needed to address you guys. So I tried not to make it really long, and I apologize if it sounds really disjointed, um, but I just felt like this is something I needed to address with you guys. So um, I'll try and be as quick as I can, but I just want to make sure that my point gets across. So um, in light of recent circumstances, as your president and leader, I feel as though I must make a few brief comments. Please allow these comments to be the final remarks on these matters. In my State of the Student Body address, I singled out apathy as the most intimidating threat to the facilitation of student life on this campus. I have been told that I am a very stubborn person once my mind is made up, but I will always admit when I am wrong. The truth is, I was wrong about apathy being our biggest threat. Lack of interest is not the problem, and it is apparent that we are. 
Last October, when I delivered my address, I was hopeful. I spoke about cooperation, supporting one another, having an open mind when considering others' opinions, and a slew of other suggestions that I thought would improve camaraderie and help us work together as a body. Apparently, my message fell on deaf ears. I certainly did not take the time to write that address for it to be ignored. I urge you to take what I am saying now to heart and do your best to listen, because I don't want to repeat myself. I have been on this body since my freshman year. Much like many other veteran members, I have attended all but one meeting, and I have faithfully kept appointments, made relationships with students and administrators, and kept my promises. I have dedicated four years of my life to this organization, waited my turn, and worked my way up from the bottom. The proudest moment of my life was when I was elected to serve as your president. I have done too much and worked too hard, as well as you all, um, for the name of SCG Inc., for it to be besmirched, and I will not end this year on a negative note. Of course, everything that may be addressed would be hearsay, so I will refrain. However, what I will say is that the behavior I've witnessed on both sides of the fence, shall we so fondly refer to the situation, is deplorable. I feel embarrassed, disrespected, and ashamed. We are supposed to be the shining beacon for student leadership, and instead we've become a wet match in a dark cave, virtually useless. We have made too many strides with student life to become irrelevant. We are our own worst enemies. What happened that caused this schism? When did we become so blinded by self-interest? I have continuously been told throughout the past few weeks that this is what the real world is like, and I refuse to accept that as true. If this is what the real world is truly like, then we need to change it. Why should we sit idly by when there is something we can do about it? I am amazed that students can treat each other in such a hateful way. I am even more amazed by the fact that each week I find myself saying, if you have a problem, please come speak with me. And week after week, I have an empty office but a growing list of grievances. Am I that intimidating that someone can't come speak to me? Do you think your problem won't be solved? Or is it just that you don't respect me enough to approach me? Because that's what it feels like. Either way, it is completely nonsensical, and I'm very hurt. And just to touch on the social media aspect of this debate, I have but one final question. Who cares? We're talking about professionalism. That's obviously very important. Were the comments made that were unprofessional? Most likely, yes. Was there one person posting their opinion on their own personal sites? Just one person? No, there was not just one person. Was there only one person singled out and chastised for their actions? I believe there was, and I feel that's wrong. Every person is absolutely, absolutely entitled to their own opinion, and you don't have to like everyone's opinions. If we want to have a discussion about our rights as granted us by the Bill of Rights, Take the landmark Supreme Court case, Cohen v. California, in which defendant Cohen was before the Supreme Court for wearing a jacket to a public courthouse that read, F the draft, on the back of it. He lost in a lower court and appealed to SCOTUS, saying that his indictment was a violation of his First Amendment right to free speech. Not only was he granted the right to wear the jacket freely, but Justice Harlan, who delivered the opinion of the court, also offered this valuable token of advice. If you disagree with the message, look away. I suggest that we all take this advice. I'm not trying to make light of the situation, but just out of curiosity, by a show of hands, how many people remember what they posted on their MySpace five years ago? Because I certainly don't. Just, uh, let's see. You <laughs> 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 raise your hand. Well, I know, because I didn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure there's things on everybody's page that would not necessarily be the best representation of their organization or their personal character, but it is their prerogative to post it. We like to talk a lot about leaving our legacies. Are you satisfied with what yours will be at this very moment in time? Think about that. Is this what you want other people, future students and future student leaders to remember? It's honestly not a surprise why no one wants to join our organizations and work with us, because this is what they walk into. Honestly, don't be surprised when students next year don't want to join the organizations. It is not entirely their disinterest, it's also the behavior that we've been perpetuating. <coughs> Do you realize how many things we could have been accomplishing instead of arguing with each other? Let me just recount what has happened in the past few weeks while I believe everybody has been arguing about different things. I spent hours meeting with administrators of Donovan, Adams Library, and the college to air student concerns and solve problems about digital banners, dining services, library services, bike sharing programs, and any other concern that has been brought to my attention, and made sure that students would still be provided with services that met their standards. I've worked with my executive council to research quotes and order um, merchandise, koozies, t-shirts, sweatshirts, and highlighters to promote our image as a corporation. 
I've also looked into a phone charging station. We've got an Whipple Hall furniture, which I'm sure Hillary Costa will say in her announcements. Um, we've looked into televisions and a long list of other things that would give us visibility. I have sat in every student enter entertainment committee meeting, created a new homecoming Facebook group, and am starting a student alumni association to facilitate current student life as well as establishing healthy relationships with students who will graduate and have graduated. And most importantly to me, I sat with a, in a four hour meeting with the dissenters of DSA and came up with a compromise, which you have in this packet. None of this is impossible to achieve, guys. None of it. But we have to work together to do it. And I know that sounds super cliche and, you know, like super lifetime movie kind of, but it's the <laughs> truth. It's the truth. Why is it in a lifetime movie? Because it's applicable to real life. That is what real life is. Um, and I still manage to go to class, complete my assignments, and I have straight A's. Um, my message to you is simple, and I will leave you with these sentiments. If you have an opinion, be sure it is your own, and speak your mind when appropriate. Solve problems as efficiently as you can, and remember that I'm always here to help you. That concludes my analysis, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, President Pankow. We're going to move on to Vice. Oh, sorry, Representative Curry. Thank you, Speaker Eskimov. I just wanted to say real quick that to collaborate with what President Pankow was just talking about when she says that. You know, if you have a problem, come talk to her. As she mentioned real quick, on Friday, as we'll go into later on, I had met with her and a couple of people for a considerable amount of time, over three hours, close, close to the four. And we were able to sit down and come up with a lot of good ideas, new ideas, fresh ideas, and be able to talk it out. We didn't, ever, we didn't agree at every point, but the point is be able to sit down and have a conversation, which is what we should be able to do more here in Parliament. But I'll just keep it brief by saying that if you do have a problem with something, and she says she will talk, she's willing to talk to you, she is. That's all I have. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Representative Santori. Is there any further comments on President Pekia's really address? Any other mm -hmm. comments? Vice President Costa. Thank you. Um, so as far as, um, well, I'll jump into this first because it relates to President Pekia's announcements. Um, Dr. Kane and I were just talking about the Student Bill of Rights, actually, and he said that the changes were submitted, oh, were. but the online version of the Student Bill of Rights <coughs> is the one that hasn't been updated okay. yet. That's what he just informed me of, but um, he said he could take care of that. Um, as far as my announcements go, we um, I've been talking to Milka to try and revamp our Anchor TV coverage, and now what's going to happen is, is I submit the meeting materials to Milka, and she has graphics for every portion of the meeting. So if we get to, say, um, programming conference report at the bottom of the screen and it'll say programming conference report because how many times has someone maybe tuned in and be like what the hell are these things? <laughs> <laughs> so that is something that I feel like no brainer let's do that so I did that well I just felt like Barry when I did that <laughs> yes um, another thing just general announcements I have another PR meeting on March 18th I have an elections meeting on March 20th the town hall open house is going to creep up on us. Um, I'm working with Secretary Auger, and she's kind of organizing the open house portion, and she's ordering us food. That's going to take place at 7 p.m. in the ballroom, and I don't want anyone to hate me, but if you are a commuter representative, I want it to be required that you are there, considering that traffic, parking, and safety is the main um, theme of the meeting as far as the town hall style goes. And then as far as the open house afterwards <coughs> goes, I would like every single parliament member to be there. So if anyone comes and has an issue or you want to report to them about what you've done for your constituents, that will be the forum to do so. March 25th at 7 p.m. in the ballroom. It's a Monday night. And there will be free food. Um, again, the Beverly McGinnis Scholarship is available. Um, that's upstairs in the office. I've talked about those requirements before. And also on March 25th, a very exciting day. Initial filing period begins to be on Parliament for the 2013-2014 academic year. So plan your plan wisely. You know, I remember last year I took a deli number. I got there early. Um, I was deli number one. Um, but anyway, but don't go to Joan and ask her for a pound of cheese because she will not give you one. And um, I think that concludes my announcements. And let's let's be productive. Like, not let's get physical. <laughs> Thank you, Vice President Costa. We'll move on to Secretary John Hawker. Okay, so um, I recruited another member for SOC. Um, I think she's going to be appointed tonight. Um, stories are coming along smoothly. Um, I have, however, extended the deadline for program evaluations to this Friday, my close of business. And the reason was 
because I rewrote the policy and it's the second by the absolute latest the second Friday of March. So <laughs> I decided I figured like there are organizations that haven't had a chance to get program details in, so I want to give them that chance. Um, so that's why I did that. Um, I am having a problem with my email, so I'm gonna try and um, figure that out tomorrow. Um, I have some organizations saying that they're not receiving any emails from me, so I'm gonna try and figure that out. Um, I have um, a few more prosecutions coming in, so be on the lookout at an upcoming meeting for those. Um, I'm still working on the class club policy with SOC, um, and my last round table meeting will be sometime in April, um, so I'll update you at the next meeting on that. The topics will be expanding your organization and passing on your records to the next generation of your organization. <coughs> and that concludes my announcements. Okay, thank you, Secretary Gianna Hawkins. We're going to move on to the Treasurer Jordan Day. Hi, guys. How's it going? I've had a crappy week, so. Anyways, <laughs> my, my vital announcements for today. Uh, budget hearings are over for the Finance Commission. Uh, recommendations were sent out on the 1st and were finally decided on the 27th, no, 22nd, something, 21st, it was the Sunday before, I don't know, 24th. thank you, 24th, <laughs> um, so far we have nine letters back and everybody is satisfied at this time, so it's really exciting for me, yeah, thank you, um, thank you again, <laughs> Nicholas, um, don't forget that if you are in an organization and you have your budget re recommendation in front of you, that is due back in my office on March 22nd before noon. Um, it's extremely vital that you get that in because there is a chance that if you don't turn in the letter, you might not get any money at all, and that kind of sucks, and I don't want that to happen to anybody because I'm a nice person. Most of the time. I'm glad you all laughed because I'm so grateful for that. Okay, sarcasm isn't working today. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was something though that I did have a really large issue with and it's something that was written in the editorial and I have to quote it because I don't want to misquote, I don't want to say anything wrong, I want to say exactly what was written and say how I feel about it and let's qualify the statement. These are my opinions, they are not, <laughs> uh, these are not the opinions of the corporation. I fully represent myself in these statements, however, they are my opinions and they're valid. So to read, addressing Escobar's specific comments, offering an additional two concerts in lieu of supporting the student newspaper, financially or otherwise, is incredibly dense and foolish, especially when said newspaper is awaiting word from SEG Inc. as to its operating budget for the following school year. That's correct. At the time of Escobar's comments, the anchor's budget was being reviewed and considered by members of SEG and the Finance Commission. Seeing as individuals from both groups, including SEG President Kyla Pecchio liked Escobar's comments, an unbiased consideration of future anchor funds may have been jeopardized. And I'd like to speak on that. Because I don't take kindly to criticism of my finance commission. I'm just going to throw it out there. I don't take kindly to criticism of Speaker Escobar either, but that's for another time. Don't ever assume that anyone but the finance commission is in, co in control of their own opinions. Don't think that Kyla has any say. Don't think that I have any say. Don't think that Travis has any say. Don't think that Gianna has any say. Don't think that Hillary has any say. Don't think that anybody else but those six people, or seven maybe, I don't remember. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan doesn't have say on Well, Ryan doesn't have say on Yes, Ryan doesn't have say on either. I thought it was so quiet. He's so quiet, I love you, I'm sorry. It means that I don't think you're, you're irritating. <laughs> of the Finance Commission is to question the integrity of me, and I do not accept that in anybody, from anyone, at all, ever. Let me make that clear, ever. So next time, you want to have your facts, you want to check, Timothy, when were we done with our Finance Commission recommendations? As a member of the Anchor staff and my Finance Commission, tell me when we were done. Sunday, February. At what time? Like two, three o'clock. Three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Three o'clock. Um, well, Tyler, when were we done? Because we we sat back and tallied numbers. Uh, I'm not sure when we we're done, but I'm gonna say that I personally don't care about anything else other Thanks. than the financial aspect of the organization. Thanks. Thanks. What a peach. <laughs> <laughs> All I have to say is that.
that my finance commission, I, am, I give them the empowerment to speak their mind, and the two people who had a conflict of interest left the room during the Anchors budget. So I'd like to congratulate my finance commission for a very successful budget hearings, and never question their integrity ever again. With that, I close my announcements, and thank you. Thank you, Chairman Bay. Uh, it's my announcements now, right? Um, yeah, I prepared a statement. Uh, as you may know, I posted a Facebook status over a week ago in response to the editorial written in the anchor. I wrote how I was feeling without thinking of the consequences, did not consider how others would feel after writing it. Unfortunately, I saw the immediate results of my actions versus the long term issues. It is the job of the Speaker of Student Parliament to remain impartial and enforce rules equally. When I was elected, I promised to do just that, and I hope that student parliament will allow me to fix my mistakes. I apologize to the anchor staff and the student body. Please understand that I was just frustrated by the criticism of the policy I wrote that, that uh, the criticism that I was facing. While I'm entitled to my own opinions and beliefs, I realized that it was completely inappropriate as an officer of parliament and student community government corporate to post them for the public to see. My opinions are my own and do not represent that of the greater body. That has deeply humbled me and put some perspective into my remaining months here at Rhode Island College. And uh, I would like to thank everyone for understanding that issue. <coughs> um, I wrote that apology a couple of days ago. Um, Hillary told me not to apologize, but I figured I'd, I'd, I'd still say what I initially wrote, feeling after that. Um, I talked to the uh, news editor, <coughs> Goslin, and we kind of, uh, I, I respect him because he did uh, attack me publicly for, for my comments, but I respect that because he did that to me, to, to my face. He came to me, uh, to my face, with, with his issues. Um, which, you know, as a student government leader leaving for graduation, I would like to push that to anyone who gets elected and to what I hold these very coveted positions. Please communicate and talk to one another. This talking behind, talking behind everyone's backs, uh, high school gossip um, is not going to get Rhode Island College very far. Um, and even after I met with the, uh, the appropriate people in terms of uh, relaying that, you know, it was just, Facebook, a Facebook status that I felt that I was enraged. Um, there were still conversations of people plotting, and people talking behind each other's backs. We're better than that after a certain age. Um, and, and that generally needs to stop. Now, going off of my statement, just speaking from the heart, you know, I was very proud and very happy when this policy passed. Um, I talked to people who may be dissenting um, to the initial idea of a financial AGPA requirement in order to receive stipends. Um, it's a very touchy issue. I know it's not popular. Um, and we passed it 13 and 9. Um, and I remember February 6th, because it was the day after uh, my grandmother passed, and I think Kyla was the only one I knew. And I uh, haven't had the greatest February at all, beyond any stretch. Um, and February 6th, the day after, was definitely, you know, it was definitely a bright spot. And then you know what happened? We passed it, and then they were like, oh, we don't, we don't like this policy. You know, members who either voted for it. Well, I brought it, what, two weeks before the policy actually got passed, and it gets passed. And then the editorial I read, um, obviously I overreacted with the uh, Facebook status, but to just see, you know, something that you put your heart in, basically. You put all your work in. And your main goal is to help your peers, who generally may not disagree with you, to graduate, you know, get out around college, uh, move on to bigger and better things. That's, that's basically the heart of policy. And again, it's not to strip away stipends, it's to just encourage to study. Um, it, it was very, uh, I, I, was, I was very angry as you can see by my status. But in no way do I think the anchor should be eradicated or any other media group that we have to or anchor TV at all. Um, otherwise, if that was always my goal, wouldn't I have done them when I was president? <laughs> you know, in the 
just after being a speaker and I can barely talk. Um, but yeah, that, that, that was sort of my February. That is why I did that on Facebook. I barely post on Facebook. Um, and I apologize mostly to the anchor staff that don't know me, that really don't really follow SCG, that see these comments, um, and now I have this opinion of me. Um, and they work really hard. I know everyone here, we work really hard. Um, and I would never want to discredit any student at all. So thank you uh, for all of that. Obviously, I know it's very choppy. But um, we're going to move on to a lot of leads, I guess. <laughs> Uh, dear Mr. Speaker, I would like to request an early leave for 9 or 9.30 because my mom has to drive out, uh, drive out to come get me after class. I would like to ensure safe passage on prize and snowstorm. Respectfully submit it. Representative Nathan Bessel, can I get a motion? A motion. Second. Representative Secretary Second to Representative Allen. Is there any discussion on that leave? <laughs> With no further discussion, all in favor approving the leave say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Abstentions. Yeah, because the best of abstains. <laughs> uh, this is from Marcia Diaz. She has to attend the Mr. Ray at your class. She's a programmer. Motion. Oh, motion. 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 Uh, he's requesting early for 9 p.m. Should we need to extend past that time? I have two midterms tomorrow, and I feel like I can get, out, get all the sleep I can. I can muster. I hope you understand, and I hope everyone has a great spring break. It's from Representative Taylor. Motion from Representative Second. Taylor. Second. Second from Representative Santari. Any discussion on this leave? And no further discussion on this leave. All, all those uh, all those in favor of approving the leave say aye. Aye. All those say no. Extensions. Representative Taylor. This is from our faculty representative, Sarawagi. Um, you have to leave early. You have to leave early, Taylor. I just <coughs> Do you have the time? Mm -hmm. When the first plate yeah. flies. <laughs> <laughs> She's requesting an early leave when the first plate flies. Uh, <laughs> representative Allen gets a motion. In, uh, second. I'll give you a second, Representative <laughs> 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 Any discussion on this leave? Well, no further discussion. All those in favor, approve and leave, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Extension. Representative Howard has to leave tonight meeting at 8 p.m. I'm sorry about that note. It was my first uh, That's okay. <laughs> it was my first uh, leave note. Motion. 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 Any discussion on the leave? No further discussion on the leave. All those approve the leave. Say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. <laughs> Representative Howard of Stain. Anything going? No. <laughs> oh, keep going. <laughs> we keep on I, Tyler Smith, request a leave of absence from tonight's final meeting. I am making a request due to my flight to London tomorrow. Wow. I have a lot to take care of uh, prior to the trip. Respectfully, Tyler Smith. Motion! <laughs> Any discussion on that leave? With no further discussion on that leave, all those who keep all those who keep approving the leave say aye. Aye. All those say no. <laughs> Abstentions. Motion passes. This is from Ashley Goldberg. Please excuse my absence from tonight's meeting. I have a mandatory rehearsal for the chorus concert on Friday. I hope you all have a great meeting and enjoy your spring break. <coughs> Motion for Representative Second. Allen. Second. From, second from Representative Howard. Can you hear, Kyla? All those in favor of the leave say aye. 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 All say no. Abstention. The motion passes. Nick Rose is requesting an early leave at 8.30. He has to study. Motion. <laughs> second. Yes. Second. Motion from Representative Santari. Second from Secretary Auger. Have you raised the card? Um, any discussion on this leave? With no further discussion on the leaves, uh, all those in favor of approving the leave say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Abstention. Representative Rose abstains. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Sanchez has a lot of exams and can't make it tonight. <laughs> Motion for Representative Allen. Second. 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 Representative Camacho. Any discussion on the leave? We're no further discussion on the leave. All those in favor of proving the leave say aye. Aye. <laughs> All those of the leave uh, say no. Nah. <laughs> 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 
abstentions? Motion passes. This is, this is, this is just Oh, okay. Killing me, uh, faculty, uh, I mean, uh, staff representative privilege is late, so we need a motion. Motion! Motion, motion representative secretary, second for representative day, any discussion? Treasurer. What? Sorry. Any discussion on the leave? No further discussion. All those in favor, approve the leave, say aye. Aye. All those against the leave, say nay. All the passengers. I've never seen so many leaves in my five years of parliament. Hey, but the table's still full. But you know what? Yes, just for now. It's <laughs> oh. the 2009 agenda, I would say. Uh, 2009? 2009. <laughs> Whoa, whatever. Wow. Deputy Speaker Ryan Bancourt. Yeah, I have no announcements. <laughs>
$57,221.88, which is 26% of conferences, and then $98,701.39 for other, which means t-shirts, capital improvements. Um, I know that the concert is there, uh, as well as stories is included in that, which I get psyched for. Status <laughs> so of the general fund, we did actually get the deposit that I said was anticipated back in January. Um, as of January 31st, that $170,000 was deposited into our account, leaving our balance at $164,566.18. The finance allocation since January 23rd has only been about $37,934.87, leaving our balance at $126,000. $621.31. Um, in this perspective and looking at this, I hope that it's kind of giving you guys an idea of what we've been working with all year. Um, finance had a busy meeting today. We had nine items on the agenda, and there was a lot of thought and discussion, and I was really excited because EVA Student Community Government was in the hot seat today. Um, so it shows that the Finance Commission is maybe changing. I am still not satisfied with the fact that we did allocate as much money, and part of that is something that student community government has to take into consideration, um, and we need to be more reflective, so that's something that I know our executive council has to do, nothing that you guys really have to worry about until it really gets thrown at you, unless you want to worry about it, which then please, take it off my shoulders. Um, but I'd just like to ask that this report get accepted with unanimous consent. Do you that item? Any opposition to that request? Thank no you. opposition, those minutes be accepted. Um, we're going to move on to old business, Dedication to Academic Success Act, or DASA, as it's now been listed to name. Uh, President Pecky and I believe I forgot to get it. Um, and feel free to chime in, Speaker Escobar, because this is your baby as well. Um, so, before I make my formal motion to amend something previously adopted, just some background information. Um, like I mentioned in my mini address, and like uh, Representative Santeri confirmed, um, myself, Secretary Auger, Vice President Costa, and Representative Santeri all sat in the office on Friday after our PECET, and we sat there for about four hours. And if Representative Sanchez was here, um, he would confirm <laughs> that he had validated a petition in the time that we sat there. He came and went. Um, so, what we have here, and I think ideally what I'd like to do is take the discussion article by article. I feel like that'll be more productive because I think we all know where most of the debate will be coming from. Um, so these are the um, suggestions that we came up with um, based on the discussion uh, from the first time DASA was approved and kind of like the rumbling since then. Um, so I would be happy, happy to answer any questions as we go through the articles, as I'm sure would Secretary Auger, Rob, and Vice President Costa would. So with that, I will make my formal motion to amend something previously second. adopted. Okay. I have a formal motion uh, by Treasurer Day and a second by Representative Santori. All in favor? Wait, no, 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 no. 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 Go and wait, all in favor of the amendments, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, I to yeah, bring it up again. Yeah. 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 This is to bring it up again, right? Discussions on the motion to bring it back up to amend. Mm -hmm. If there's no discussion, it comes then, back to the table. Right. Yes. That's what I thought. That's a, okay. That's the yes. So now is there just 
Right. This is discussion on discussion us on bringing it back. Right. Okay. Is there any d discussion on the motion made by President Becky? There is no motion. This is a point of information. So yeah. by amending this, are you cutting Article 4, or is that just a Yes. Yeah. But we're, we're not, talk, we're we'll not voting about it. on it We'll now. talk about it. We're not voting on it now, but that's what we'll talk about. Essentially, yes, though. All right. So if there is no discussion on the amendment, we we'll move on to a vote. Yeah. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Now we're going to talk about, now that it's back on the table, we're going to talk about what the changes we made were article by article. Hope that's okay with everybody. I think that'll eliminate some confusion. So um, we're going to talk about article one first, clearly. So one of the things that had been brought up was that um, some people were concerned about the amount of money that was going to be spent. Um, was this the part? No. So about the amount of money that was going to be spent um, from our general fund to fund this program. So if you wouldn't mind looking at the proposed amendment that we had, and I'd just like to say if uh, Rob actually put it better in our meeting than I did. Um, these are what is proposed. We have not, you know, looked into, I mean, we're, we're talking feasibility, yeah. We're talking about um, reserving a parking space. That has not been looked into yet. Um, our intent with this is to just, you know, kind of end the discussion on DASA, come up with some creative ideas, look into it, and then once Parliament reconvenes next semester, if something needs to be changed then based on the information I compiled, then it can be changed. So that's where we're going moving with this discussion. So please keep that in mind. So um, Article 1 is where, what we changed is where you see that uh, Vice President Casa has conveniently highlighted it for us. Um, and in lieu of spending $3,000, $4,000, and $4,500, we came up with sort of a compromise that would um, say that uh, any student who made the Dean's List, their name would be entered into a raffle, which we would pick a name out, and they would have a choice of a $50 gift card or a reserved parking spot, um, which ideally we would buy a sign for, and I know everybody's laughing at it, we've got to figure out the feasibility. We're, we're trying to think of things that people would use, right? Um, so, and I thought that if there was something like a parking spot where somebody walked by and said, how can I get that? It would make someone come right up here and join the club. So, discussion on <coughs> this. There's a list teacher. Speaker has a problem. Obviously, I've already, I've already expressed this to you mm -hmm. privately, um, Kyle. Um, I mean, I'm okay with they reserve parking space for the semester. But, I mean, initially, I think that's wonderful. I just, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little confused, I guess, because I know this was part of the grand compromise. Mm -hmm. um, because initially, the policy, the initial policy that was passed mm -hmm. um, was talked about, you know, student government is like elitist, in a way. Um, I remember um, some discussions, some, some, some people had concerns that could be, you know, bad PR movement for us initially. In terms of the, the, uh, the library, the Article 4, which is getting cut out in these amendments, so I don't know, I'm, I'm sort of confused in terms of thinking, I don't know how we go from the initial policy to, you know, we're trying to cut out the things that make us elitist, and we come up with this, and then we're coming out, we, we want a reserved parking space for the semester, when parking is the number one issue which students, um, you know, uh, are always attacking the college on. Um, so I, I mean, if, Parliament, what really likes idea, they really want to pass that. I mean, I don't know if the administration can help us, I, I, I doubt that um, with that issue, but we could try. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I would tread lightly, at least on that, because I think that makes us, you want to talk about elitist, getting a reserve parking space, that's, that's pretty elitist on there. Um, but I'm not doing a motion to take care, to take out any of that. I just want to mention my concerns. Okay. Uh, I love my representative Davidson. Thank you. Um, Quick question and then a quick comment. The question is, is this the language right here that would be going right in? So, yes. And then if so, can we make tiny little nitpick amendments Absolutely. to it? Absolutely. Okay, so the friendliest possible amendment in this discussion, I'm motioning to add the word B in between two and one with graduating seniors with your word with an article or two B one at graduation. Mm -hmm. And then motion to change the number three over there with three semesters to three and with a three in parentheses, just to follow through with our usual bylaws language. Does the body accept that as friendly? Right. 
<laughs> okay, is that it? That's it. That's okay. all right. Uh, treasure day. I was going to say that I really agree with this. I'm just, the only thing that I'm concerned about is making sure that students get the best value out of winning. I think every student's going to want a parking spot. Um, I think that, personally, I think that the parking spot sounds really great to me. <laughs> I'm not eligible for it. <laughs> but it sounds awesome. Um, but I think that maybe as an alternative to a gift card to the campus store, maybe a, um, words are escaping me, maybe a scholarship for students, maybe, just like maybe a small $250 scholarship. That way it's almost the same value. I don't feel like the value is equal maybe is where I'm at. Okay. Not that I don't like the idea of the book card, but I, like, I think that the value isn't equal for a parking spot to the $50 book card. So that's the only difference. So would it be accepted as friendly if I said a two hundred fifty dollar uh, scholarship? Does the body accept that as friendly? Uh, okay. I have no opposition. Um, point of information, Treasurer Day, could you just give the exact language for the minutes? Okay. Um, that bullet point specifically would read a two hundred fifty dollar scholarship rewarded directly to the student. Okay. Just to clarify, the body does accept that as friendly. Well, just if that's in addition to the other two bullets there. No, they would choose. No, um, but it's it's a fifty dollars gift card or a parking space or two hundred fifty dollars scholarship. No, 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 we're replacing fifty dollars gift card with two hundred fifty dollars scholarship. Maybe we should add or. Yeah, it says receive either A, and they, the choice would be the students. Because we figured resident students were the toughest. Yeah, they might. Sure. Four, 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 people, four people who would use all the transportation. Does that include comments? Yes. Okay. Representative Rose, did you have anything to say? Because uh, I, I saw you, uh, you might have raised your card, I wasn't sure. Well, well I, would, I would like to, to oppose this because because of the fact that Representative Howard and I have brought this up earlier of uh, students with uh, with learning disabilities, and, and I don't and I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair to us. Uh, uh, point of order, Mr. Speaker. Um, we're only talking about Article One right now. It's like we're just kind of going step by step. Do you have any more anything to say about Article One? Uh, no. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Mr. Taylor. I'm just worried about with the parking spot. That could cause nightmares for us. I mean, people could get towed, fined. I, I want to echo what uh, Speaker Escobar said in his announcements. It, it does, to me, I mean, it's, it's a good idea to, to an extent, but I do feel like it could be taken as elitist. So I don't know if this is appropriate value to motion to strike uh, a reserve parking space for the semester. Okay. Just to say, we have a motion to strike the reserve parking space. Do I have a second? I have a second by Representative Whistle. Um, is there any discussion? Um, is there an alternative option? Uh, because I think that they should be given a choice for what they want as a reward. They, like we give them an honor cord for making a certain requirement. Um, we're offering to give them a $250 scholarship. If they don't have the option for a parking spot, then I would like to up the value of the scholarship. Because I think that it's only fair that they, if they get, they you get the most bang for your buck, um, <laughs> and it's student community government expending the dollars. Um, I think that academics are a worthwhile thing to expend for, and whether or not, like I understand the nightmare, but I'd like to know if there's an alternative, and if there is, what is it? And if it's increasing the scholarship, that's cool with me. If it's not increasing anything and just leaving the way it is, I don't care. But I just want to know if there is an alternative at all. President Beck, did you have anything? I passed. That was what I'm going to ask. Before I move on to Vice President Costa, I just want to ask if there's anybody else um, that had any comments, because I might have missed some. I have Vice President Costa, Mr. Sanitary, and Dr. Kane. Is there anybody else? I think Rebecca down there. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, Vice President Costa? Okay. Um, I also just wanted to point out that we or if you, if, if the idea is that this is elitist, we already have, um, the college already reserves a space, and the president um, takes somebody um, due to their academic success to have a reserve spot in front of Horace Mann. If you know where the union spots are for the Donovan workers, across that is Mann Hall, and over there, there are there is a designated spot for a student that's chosen based on academic standards. 
So that's why um, when this was proposed in our meeting with President Pecchia, I didn't view it as something that was elitist. That concludes my remarks. Ms. Allen? My problem with this has nothing to do with the fact that it's elitist. It has to do with the fact that you're now in a raffle. And before it was you get the card if you get this. Now you're in a raffle. So now let's say I get straight A's. I've never gotten it before because I wanted the $20 gift card or whatever. Say I wanted a $20 gift card. My point is now you're in a raffle with say 100 other students or 200 other students or 1,000 other students. The chance of you actually winning it makes it to the point where you don't necessarily care about it. That would be my issue with it because you're making it a raffle and because you're watering it down. I don't personally like it. That's just my piece. Thank you. Mr. Santeri? I just want to thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker Bancourt. I just want to echo the sentiments that Vice President Cox has said when she her spiel about there was already a spot in existence, which is why I felt this wasn't um, elitist. I, when, I look, when I look at this as the reserve spot, well, two things. When I look at the reserve parking space, it's a good idea because we, we were thinking about, okay, what do students use here on campus? Now, I personally don't drive, which is why I thought the offer between a, you know, equal value having, say, treasure, the Treasure Days idea is excellent, $200 scholarship. That having the choice between the two, I think, is important, especially for those students who don't drive or who don't, um, you know, have a car here on campus. And especially because that also applies to res students who don't who live on campus. Um, so I don't feel it's the least. And I also, the reason why I think it's still effective, even though it's a raffle, is because it's, it's an incentive to, it's not supposed to be something, because obviously it's supposed to want to do well anyway. I think the incentive is there because it's in the back of someone's mind, as long as they're aware of this, of course, that hey, if I do well, then I can get into the raffle. And, and when someone wins it, they go, oh, wow. You know, I, I was able to get this spot. And the great thing I think about the parking space too is that it's also a great PR thing for the corporation because now people see this space. And like, um, I forget who said it, I apologize, but someone said, when they see that space, they're gonna say, oh wow, uh, President Peck, yeah, thank you, Treasure Day. They're gonna say, oh wow, hey, uh, this, is a cool, this is a cool thing, and then inquire about it, and they might wanna join Parliament after doing so. So that's just my comments, thank you. Thank you, Dr. King. Similar point to what was raised earlier. I just didn't know if there was a question about everybody gets an honor court as graduating, but not everybody gets a scholarship or a parking spot. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. An equity issue. Mr. Taylor. Um, I just want to counter the point that was just made. The uh, the school picks someone, um, this is the first time I've been aware of this, but I'm sure it's based on only their academics. This is reserved only for executive board members. Um, so it is kind of like a narrow, it isn't just like the entire campus as a whole. It's, it's, it, we're not, you know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to say. So it does, in my opinion, still come off as elitist. And as a commuter and a commuter at large representative, it does, it could seem like a good PR move to have a space for someone who have good academics in the organization. At the same time, though, as someone who has trouble parking, I don't think that's a good PR move. I think it's going to actually infuriate a lot of students. So. Thank you. Thank you. President, thank you. Oh, it is me. Ooh, all right. Well. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a good point, Mr. Taylor, and I agree with you. Um, I don't want to make another motion on top of it, so I'm just going to go <coughs> forward and make, we'll see how this discussion goes. If it doesn't work, whatever. I'll, I'll do it as a formal motion. But would everybody feel comfortable and accept it as friendly if we said every um, member of a student organization who obtains Dean's List and put them into the raffle? Would that have any objection? Does the body accept that as friendly? No? Uh, All right, cool. I guess I'll make a formal motion. I guess so, yeah. I don't want to do a motion on top of a motion. No, it does not. Um, <laughs> thank you, though. The only thing I want to say, I, just to echo the sentiments of what Mr. Santeri said about the raffle, um, it's kind of discouraging to hear that, you know, we came up with another alternative. First, nobody wants to spend the money on all the people, and now nobody wants to be entered into a raffle. So, like, what do we do? <laughs> what do we do? Um, First, money was a problem, giving everybody a gift card was a problem, and now giving only one person something is a problem. Um, and I'm just, I, I would just like suggestions, just throw them at me, think of them. I, I tried to give this to you as early as possible so you could think of them, um, and let us know, because we spent four hours, and that's what we came up with, and Georgia came up with something in five seconds, and we all were like, yeah, that's a good point. It's possible. Um, and then, just about the graduation cards, I just think that's a little different than, um, 
a scholarship or a parking spot because I think that's more representative that you were a student leader and that you were part of a student organization. Um, and I guess we have to change that language too if I'm going to make a formal motion to change executive board member to student activity person, um, to people in a student organization. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Speaker Esper. Um I wasn't at the, uh, the meeting for these amendments. Um, very happy everyone came together and um, came up with these ideas. What I think I'm a little bit confused about in terms of the sentiments of yeah, I'm done, yeah, yeah. in terms of sentiments of Representative Allen, um, Dr. King, uh, in terms of the equality, I guess, because I, correct me, anyone can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I believe the first go around we went through this policy, Article One, and anyone can correct me, Article One, I think that was the easy part. Mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. Except for the pizza. Except for pizza, you have to be in pizza. Um, and I'm just, I'm, I guess I'm just a little confused of why the grand change of Article One. Um, I don't believe, I mean this is only my personal belief, I don't believe $4,000, $5,000 is a lot of money to sort of invest um, for executive board members who could potentially reach things list, um, especially when it was initially, that was Passed. There was really no opposition. Um, I don't. I, I. I. I think the new changes make us more elitist. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to use the word term more elitist, but I think it can be more of a bad PR than it was. Um, then the initial, anyone that's an executive board member at UC Dean's list, guess what? You're going to get a gift from us. You're going to get a little letter from us saying congratulations. You reached Dean's list. Um, I. I'm a big supporter of the original Article One. And I, I, I guess, I, I don't know, it has to be explained to me why there was such a grand change from something that was universally accepted uh, to now where we're at now. Where we're basically going to help out one student who reaches Dean's List as compared to any student who's executive board member that reaches Dean's List. Because, you know, we approved $5,000 for food services for, for our budget, student government. I'm pretty sure we can find some money, um, you know, for students who reach academic excellence. I think we could do it. I, I think we can fiscally uh, put this in our budget, this program. Um, so those are my remarks. Thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, Treasurer Day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on whether or not it's fiscally important if I, I, I don't really, y'all know the fiscal state. <laughs> I don't need to reiterate that. Um, I think if I can speak on why I don't feel this is elitist, because we're going to use that word for fun, please. <laughs> um, and why I feel that this actually might be better, in a sense. Not that I, because Peter <coughs> Escobar and I love to agree to disagree. Mm. Um, I think the benefit that I see in changing the, the Article 1 is that it becomes I, everybody says that it becomes more elitist, but in reality, it does become more coveted. coveted. You get your, there's that one chance that you have to win, and maybe you have it every semester. You get one chance every semester that you're here as a student organization leader. How many opportunities do you get to be a student organization leader? Some people get to do it for four years. Some people get to do it for five years. Some people do it for three. Some people do it for two. Some people do it for one, and it's a really great opportunity for them. Um, the fact that you're perpetually included in the system, no matter how many times you make Dean's List, doesn't make this exclusionary. It means that you're allowed as many times as you meet Dean's List to be included in the raffle. So you could win the raffle twice in a year. That'd be awesome, right? I think so. I wish I could get $500 a year or a reserve parking spot for a month whole year. I'd be so happy. Um, I think that in reality what this does is actually the parking space, the making it once a, a raffle, at the end of the day it says, you know what, you have the opportunity to be valued by a body that's so diverse that they're willing to recognize you for your academics. Um, we're recognizing every student organization member or every executive board member, or maybe student organization member, um, for this. And I think that that alone says that we care about academics. The thing that I think people are looking into too much is our image. We shouldn't be concerned about our image. Um, we should be concerned about the students. 
And at the end of the day, I think any student entered into a raffle will be grateful for the opportunity to win $250 to go towards books, to go towards that $250 bill that they can't pay off, um, to go towards a parking spot that they don't have to fight tooth and nail for. Um, Tyler Dean and I have battled for parking spots. I know it's I, like, those things are coveted, whether you admit it or not. And I think that at the end of the day, no matter what Article 1 says and what the amendments are, it's going to be seen a certain way by somebody. Our image can't be always be our concern. There's going to be days that we fight with the administration, hopefully in a friendly fire kind of way. Not like we shoot ourselves, but you know what I'm saying. Um, but more of a, we care about the students, we care about their success, and we want to show them that we recognize every student, every executive board member for being successful, no matter what. And yes, one person does get a reward, but it just, how many semesters are you willing to try to be on Dean's list or to be on the president's list? Try as hard as you can because I've never made it <laughs> and I've been here for five years. So, with that noted, I'd like to call the question. Motion to call the question. Uh, motion to call the question. Do I have a second? Take a minute. I, I, I took it back. Oh, you can just hold now. Just hold now. Uh, what name is it the question on? The motion to, call the question to strike? Call uh, the question on the strike. To strike the reserve parking spot? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so we want to vote on striking the bullet. Uh, we'll call the question on the discussion, and then we have to vote on the motion to strike. Yes. Oh. All right. I have uh, in, in, in a second. Uh, do I have a discussion? No, no, no discussion. discussion. No discussion. No. No discussion. Um, we now move on to the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The no. Division. Oh, gee, really? Just to remind everybody what, what we're voting on, it is uh, to strike. To end, end, no. discussion. end discussion. To end, to, to end discussion on striking the parking space and to move on to the vote. Uh, so, just vote on five minutes. Let's be honest, hypothetically, let's say I win it, 
I'm not here until about 6 o'clock on Mondays and Wednesdays. I'm basically not here unless it's SCG. So let's say I win that spot. Monday and Wednesday, that spot's going to be empty. That's potentially, let's say, five people park there per day. Let's say like, 10 people can't park there now. So and in, uh, in essence, we're taking that spot away from other people. And um, about the whole, um, the whole, what is it, the executive board thing? I think people might create clubs just to get into the raffle, or they might join clubs they wouldn't normally and be on the executive board just to you know, get their name in there. So that's all I have to say. Uh, Mr. Martin. Well, Representative Bissell made all the points that I wanted to make about the usage of it could be better utilized. Okay. An excellent point, Representative Bissell. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Dean. Uh, I would just like to say that, you know, first of all, I hate even speaking on something so trivial as a reward. But uh, first of all, I'd like to say that the executive board members that do make it to this raffle, they're not there by chance. They shouldn't be re rewarded by chance. Just give us something small, small gift card. Give me a free meal to Don. That will be awesome. <laughs> That's uh, and yeah, about the parking space. Personally, if I won the parking space, I wouldn't even take it because of all the people with such like strong animosity towards this act. I feel like my car would get slashed tires. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wouldn't even want anything to do with this parking space, to be honest. It's like a huge target. <coughs> so that's all I'd like to say. Just give us something small. We'll be happy. You know, that's it. Thank you. Mr. Dow? I, I, President Pecky has said, you know, solutions, so I have a few. First, I think we should either go back to the 20 for everybody, and then maybe have a raffle for like a grand prize winner. So everybody gets something, and then there's one that gets a little bit more. I think that might be a little more realistic than just saying only one person's gonna get something. Second, what we used to do is you'd have lunch with the president. It was semi-formal, you had to dress up, you know, suit and tie. It could be a president of SCG, it could be the president of college, whatever. But you actually had a formal lunch at a set time or dinner, whatever, and have something where you actually get to mingle with maybe the president or something like that to where you actually are put in the position of having to show off your leadership skills when somebody asks you a question. Um, I was just at a conference and I was talking to professors with, you know, a lot of letters after their name and some people didn't know how to speak to them because we're so nervous that we've never learned how to actually speak to anybody except for our, our own professors. So that would be my two suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bailey? Ah, oh, finally, an hour and a half. It's going to break your heart. I, 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 I did, I did. Uh, but there's a, a famous uh, kid's book that says a point in every direction is like having no point at all. And I think you have to look at this and say, what was when Travis um, drew this whole thing up, and, and specifically Article One? What was the intent? And it was to his intent was to recognize student leaders. And if it was to give a twenty dollar gift card, it wasn't we're going to pay one student's tuition. It was a token of you know recognizing that person, giving them a certificate, giving them an honest quote, and recognizing all of them equally and not singling one out and saying, hey, it's great that you all made Dean's List, but we're only gonna really recognize one and give them the grand prize. So I believe in fairness, okay, um, when, it, when it comes to this. And I, that's why I liked, liked it the way it was written and not recognizing any one person outside of the logic group. But I think it's more of just the recognition. It's not a reward. If you can, I made Dean's List. That's pretty much good enough if, if, you, if you've done it. You know what I mean? You don't need anything more than that. And I think it's to just recognize our student leaders as being academically successful. And for those that aren't, maybe you want to be part of that group. And I don't want to institute a 2-2 rule, but I think tonight, the administration has reminded me that we closed the building at midnight. And so as we go down this, formulate a thought, make a point, and a point in every direction is like having no point at all. Thank you. Mr. Taylor. All right, I, I still don't think that, I, we're still talking about this parking spot, how I'm following this conversation, but uh, 
I don't think it's a good idea to hit students such a sore spot on the campus. However, people are asking for an alternative to the parking spot, so I might have one. I don't know if it's feasible, but how can you put points in someone's car so they can use it to go on trips or anything like that to make student activities? That, that's just an alternative that I'll propose. I hope someone picked the scholarship over the, uh, the money to go on trips, but or the card money, if I have to use it. But that's it. Mr. Sanitary. Mr. Sanitary. Thank you, Deputy Speaker Pettenford. I'm just going to say two quick things that I feel like we kind of touched on every avenue of this conversation at this point, so I'll keep it brief. Um, the parking, none of this was supposed to be meant as elitist, first off. I mean, that's a pretty key thing. It's about being able to win something that you want to use. And someone says, well, maybe I won't use the space. Well, that's why we the choice of either or. You're not going to get both, you get one or the other. That's just something we came up with because we feel that if someone gets a $20 gift card, it's a nice token of appreciation but at the same time they go, well, I got a $20 gift card at the bookstore, but I didn't go to the bookstore. I bought books this semester, I didn't even buy them. I didn't even go to the bookstore. I was lucky enough to be able just to go on Amazon and get my books, to be honest, to be frank. And at this point, I mean, maybe I can use $20 for something else in the bookstore than books, but at the same time, if we just, it's a just debate about who uses what, then I, I, again, I'm not even, I can't even drive. I legally cannot drive, and I'm someone who proposed the parking space. Because I just think that as people who move on this campus, the number one thing I hear is parking. And I don't think it's elitist just because, again, we already have something like that in place. And the other thing is, too, the reason why they put in a raffle is that everybody has a fair chance. Honestly, at this point, if someone, if someone could just call the entire thing elitist because it just applies to executive board members. But that's a whole nother argument for a whole nother time. So I just want to recommend that we just come to the conclusion at this point or go to a vote or something like that because we're still in Article 1 and we still have other stuff to cover. At this point, I think every single issue has been covered. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Costa. Okay, just one thing. Um, I would like to echo the sentiments of Representative Dean and the fact that, you know, he just wants something small. In my opinion, this was something that I compromised on in giving incentive. I stick to the opinions I had when this bill originally came to the floor. I just think it's sad that students don't want to do well on their own and that they need something at the end of the tunnel for them. I just think that's, to me, that just blows my mind that you don't want to do well for yourself, but for something, for a reward at the end of the day. And with that, I'd like to motion to call the question. Second. Okay. I have a motion to call the question. I am a second by Representative Allen. Um, okay. All those in favor? Of information, yeah. Deputy Speaker. Yeah, yeah. We're, at this point, we're calling a question about the cutting the parking space. Yes. The same call the question so, as It's the same call the question as before. <laughs> I want to um, clarify. Right. Okay. So, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Abstentions? Okay. Uh, so, moved. Uh, so, Okay. So now we're going to vote on the name motion, which is to strike the, uh, the parking spot bullet point. All those in favor? Oh, uh, any discussion? No, we can't. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Yeah, just do it. Yeah. Hand vote. Yeah, we're giving another hand vote, guys. Um, so, we're going to Okay. All in favor, please raise your hands and keep them high. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. All opposed? And any abstentions, please raise your hand. One, two, okay. With six, yes, eleven, no, and two abstentions, the motion fails. Is there any further discussion on our report? Observation is that with respect to the uh, 
graduating seniors, everybody seems to be kind of on board with that, think honor course is a good idea. It recognizes all graduating seniors who have reached the achievement in a very public way, sort of like uh, the most public way, right? <laughs> in front of in front of not just in front of student government, but everybody's gonna know why they are gonna have these special cords. There's gonna be something written in the program that of what their achievement is, their parents will know, they will know. It'll be good for them. They'll feel good about it. Their parents will feel good about it. And, and I think to a degree, student community government will benefit from that, right? Because they'll see that student community government is kind of behind academic achievement. It sort of, I think, is, is good for you. So my thought is, how do you do that for the non-graduating seniors? I mean, that's really what we're talking about here, right? Is, you know, like Mr. Paolucci had said earlier, sort of that public recognition, that pat on the back, that token, in the most public way that you can do it, what is your most public ceremony that student government runs? And what could you do at that ceremony where the person feels like they're recognized for their achievement, they're recognized in front of people, and they're recognized you know, in, in a way that sort of demonstrates that student community government is um, behind academic achievement. So there's a benefit to the organization as well as, as to the individual. Those are my thoughts. Um, I, I just think that, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I really haven't heard um, a lot of opposition to the original Article 1. I guess that's, that's where it's a little bit of my confusion is in terms of why abandon the original Article 1 to create this one. Um, so that's, that's really, in short, that's, that's really where my confusion lies because, you know, $4,000, $5,000, we spend two thousand dollars on the uh, Federal Beginner Scholarship for two people. Um, you know, add two more, and then you can help out. What, what is it? What, what's four thousand divided by twenty? Anybody? Anybody else? How many students? Four thousand divided by twenty. Come on, five hundred. It's not that big. Two hundred. So uh, you could potentially help out. Well, not help out. You know, give a gift to you know potentially two hundred students. Um, when I came into student government, and the reason why I keep bringing this up until the article one, when I came into student government, you know, we have we have a good amount of funds. I don't want to step on treasury days, you know, toes and talking about funds or finances. Um, but I've always, <laughs> but I've always wanted to sort of create more programs as as fiscally responsible as possible that would help out as much students as possible. Um, and I think I think part of one, the original one, is golden. I don't think it should be touched. I don't think this one should, you know, exist to replace the original. One. That's the last time I'll speak about part one. So those are my sentiments. Thank you, Treasurer Day. So to answer Speaker Escobar's question about why somebody disagrees with Article One, the original one, not the one that it is. Um, originally, when it was proposed. The numbers that Speaker Escobar and I, we kind of compromised on the numbers. Um, as I saw with BIFC, Books for Community Involvement, um, sometimes money can go to waste in certain programs. And I'm not saying that this is a waste. I, I want to strictly say that. Um, I think that a $20 gift card, though, and we're buying them every semester, and we have that money set aside, could go towards other organizations that have really great events here on campus, like the Diversity is a Way of Life Conference, which just had, which just they're requesting in at the end of March. Um, there's they there's a ton of the LGBTQ Summit, which is coming up on March 23rd, presented by Hope. Though that money should be reserved for those student organizations who are putting on these successful events. Um, so I personally don't agree with the $20 gift card anymore. Um, I didn't agree with it originally, but I, I wanted to compromise, and I and I strongly feel that if we did pass it today and we went back to the original language, the student community government would be able to operate fine with asking for an additional amount of money to run this program. And, I, and I'm not saying it as in, I don't think that, that, art, that the original Article 1 is a terrible idea. I'm just saying, from my perspective, let's qualify who we are here. Um, say from my perspective as Jordan Day, um, current Treasurer of Student Community Government, that to say that we're definitely going to have 4,450 
$4,500 and five or however much it is in the next few years isn't solid. So it makes me concerned to say something like that. And something else that was brought up was the dinner. Um, and we argued over a pizza jubilation. Um, so I'm not bringing back up the idea of a meal. I, I respect your opinion, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't address it. Um, however, I feel that we argued over whether or not a pizza party or a pizza jubilation or a freaking celebration was worth it. And whether or not the celebration was with an alumni per, uh, person who has professional experience, who graduated with top honors, or if it's with staff, or if it's with college administrators, we said that the pizza party could be whatever, or the celebration could be whatever, and that argument ceased last, on February 6th. <laughs> and I'd like to leave that thought there. So, that's all I have for my comments. Thank you. Mr. Nickerson. Mmm, thank you. Um, sorry, I didn't eat anything today, and I was like, oh my god, we need a break. So, okay, so I just have one question. Are SCG executive officers eligible for the honor board? Yeah. Do you, do you I would want one. Yeah. Okay, I'm just, I'm just asking. Uh, yeah, it should be stated then, sorry. That was what my intent was. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's it nice. It says that executive council is eligible for the program, and then, like, later You're right, on, okay. Just because I, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's something that, you know, there's six of you. That so, so could you make a friendly amendment to change some language for me? Oh, uh, sure, I'd be happy yeah. to. Um, um, what do you think? Um, maybe if we add, um, <coughs> As, as they like the third bullet point after graduating seniors, SCG executive council members are eligible to receive an honor for it, provided the other provisions are met. Well, could we do, I mean, if, not to complicate ourselves, but Jordan brought a good point. What if we just said the SCG Inc. executive council is not eligible for the reward program, but will receive a, a quarter upon their graduation? Yes. But it's eligible. But it's eligible for a quarter upon their graduation. Yeah, okay. like that. A language machine. Fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, so the language we're proposing as a friendly amendment is the SCG, is that second bullet point, the SCG Inc. Executive Council is not eligible for the reward program, but <coughs> is eligible for... Uh, it says not eligible for the reward program, but is eligible to receive an honor board at graduation. I would remove the is or already eligible. Well, you probably, as long as they meet all requirements, I think needs to be put in, down somewhere, but I don't know, I don't know. Now I'm confused. This is the easy part. So no. What were you saying? Say um, it again. The SEG Inc. Executive Council is not eligible for the rewards program, however, can be considered and are eligible for the honor cord. I don't know. For an honor cord. I don't know. I got nothing, guys. I'm sorry. Right, except the concept is friendly. Does someone have language for me, please? Someone come up with something. Gianna, let's okay. go. Um, the SCG Inc. Executive Council is not eligible for the program as a non-graduating student, but is eligible for the program as a graduating student. I know. I don't know if that's what we're talking about. But does about. that eclipse? Uh, the we're talking about the. We're, we're talking about the being uneligible for the rewards program, but eligible for the grant the court. <laughs> it's very simple. I know we got it. Or what if we change the SCG Executive Council's eligible for the reward program, but then add a third bullet point down after graduating seniors that say SCG Executive Board members are eligible to receive honor awards. Graduating, yes. Provided, yes, graduating. Okay, I'm formulating. Voting. <laughs> okay. uh, sorry. Yeah. I distracted you. Oh, it's alright. Hillary's coming up with something, but you could, do you have more comments? There's your high guy. Um, who's who's score is it though? Oh, Barry. I'm, I'm, I'm golden. Um, that was all I just wanted to suggest. You should have the language stuff. Vice President Costa is that This is now being list. listed as the third bullet under graduate, the initial bullet of graduating seniors. Graduating SCG Inc. Executive Board members are eligible to receive this honor. Cool. Da, 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 da. Does the body accept that as friendly? Thank you. Woo! Uh, so moved. I'll let you yell out. Vice President, do you have any more remarks? Uh, yes, I do. Because you were next in the Yes. Okay. Um, so, as 
far as Dr. Kane was talking about in um, making it so all the people who are, are recognized, one thing that I brought up in the meeting but kind of was not really a compromise in respect to what Speaker Esquire originally proposed was I had suggested that at when you hit, when they hand out cap and gowns at, at the um, cap and gown convocation that those who are student leaders who meet the GPA requirements or make these lists are recognized at that convocation with a certificate because I know that I'm not trying to shoot my own horn, but I was accepted into who's who on behalf of the college chapter, and I'll be accepting, I'll be, I'll be recognized at that ceremony, and I know that I appreciate that, and I don't need it to be monetary compensation. I think that holds just as much value to be recognized in that way by the administration. So that's another suggestion to throw out there, um, and that concludes my remarks. Ms. Allen. Um, one of my thoughts of, of what Dr. Kane said is storgies are a big thing. We have all of the clubs there. We got all the executive board there. Why don't we do something where they get something there? You have them recognize the, the certificate, something. Get them recognized like they do at graduation and leave it at that. That way, everybody's there. No, maybe you don't get it this year. Maybe your club didn't do well. But then that's the incentive for next year that your name will be called. The storeys kind of umbrella takes care of it all because it's your kind of the non-graduating senior thing moment club-wise. Thank you. Uh, we have no one left on the list currently. Uh, okay. <laughs> Vice, Vice President Costa. Just to remark on what uh, Ms. Allen had said, I appreciate that idea more because we're already paying for these clubs to get this dinner. So it's a free dinner for them, and on top of that, it's the recognition. So I think it kind of satisfies all the things we're looking for in some ways. So I like the idea. Um, so I have two things. One, I think, I, if I can recall, recognizing students were brought up, for this, at the Story Awards was brought up last time again. Um, and I disagreed with it then, and I disagree with it now. <laughs> um, I think that the Story Awards is a special place for student organizations, um, and I think that some students in that perspective may get embarrassed that their other executive board officers are called up or recognized for their academics. Um, I mean, if you said everybody who made the president's list, please stand up in your seat and we'll give everybody a round of applause, that's okay. But to be like, here, you get a certificate, you get a certificate at Stories really singles out the kids who suck academically, and I think that that's unfair to them. I don't think that's what she wants. Yeah. No, I, I, I no. But if you want more of the clapping and the standing, I want the clapping and the standing, yes. Yeah. Sorry. It's cool. I, but I just want to make sure that. We can't be singling out students for doing well at a, a, an event like that because not everybody in that room is going to feel comfortable in that situation. So that was my main concern. But the other thing was Tim Ballin had more to add about courts. Um, thank you. And though, um, I'd like to respectfully disagree with uh, Treasurer Day in terms of the recognition of stories. I love you. Uh, my bad. Um, the, the whole idea about stories is that you have pretty much every single executive board meeting. Um, if, if, if we want to recognize them for their academic achievements, I think what you just said, simple as, if you can stand up and be recognized if you were on the president's list. Um, and, you know, I, I'm a part of an organization called Neocur, and we give out little tiny pins that are like $3 a piece, and you can just give them to that. Um, and it's a great way of just recognizing them as a body in general, which is what Dr. Kane um, suggested, as well as recognizing the non-graduating seniors. I think that's the whole point of recognition, is to recognize everyone who's involved. Yes, I also agree with the story. So, so. Okay. I give the floor to Jordan. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, like I said, if you're standing up and clapping, that's cool. But I don't want anybody to be singled out. Like, that's what I said. So if you want to add that in, that's fine. I don't care. But just I mean, make sure that's. But um, I don't think it's necessary. If you're not a graduating student, like, you're getting recognized on a semesterly basis via a letter. Um, I mean, I like the idea of a pin. We can order pins with our logo. Say, congratulations. You get a logo. Um, uh, anything of that nature, I'm willing to adopt, but I don't think that it's absolutely necessary to honor students 
every semester. Like, it's not going to be as seamless as everybody thinks it, it's going to be. And I foresee that being an issue because we're not going to be able to recognize everybody. We we're only going to be recognized for recognizing students for the fall at, stor at stories. So then we're going to have to wait a full year to recognize the group, that group again, and they're not necessarily going to be there. Um, I think that just saying those people that made Dean's List this year or are on their way to making dean Dean's List, if they hope, please stand and clap. That's cool. But I, yeah, nothing too crazy. That's all. Thank you. Secretary Auger. Um, I pass. Um, Treasurer Day already said my same the same sentiment that I had, so I passed. Mr. Oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about logistics. Um, the same reason stories wouldn't work because finals are after stories and grades are posted a week and a half after that. This cap and gown is also at the end of April. We take our finals in May, so it, you wouldn't be able to recognize students who complete their third semester at that time, which is really unfortunate because I thought it sounded perfect. I really do like the idea of badges, though. I think we're onto something here because it's cheap, it's easy, it's it's fun. You know, you can do what you want with it, and if you catch all eight, it's almost like remember Pokemon when you got all these badges, and you're like, yeah, Pokemon Master. <laughs> it, it creates a different level of incentive, but I think like people might have fun. Like, oh man, I got like six of these now. I think it's a great idea. Three bucks a pop. I, I don't know. I just I really like that idea, the frugalness. So uh, I think President Pecky has started this meeting by saying this is like a 2009 agenda. I'm not yeah. exactly sure what you meant by I that. I meant that it was long and it had stuff on it. Yeah, so <laughs> you know what? That's what I thought what you meant. So, uh, and I think part of the reason that it was long in 2009 is because we would try to work out the details of resolutions and stuff in this type of environment when it probably, we got a lot of great, I love this, I, I love the incentive program. So let me just say that. For, I just think that's the greatest idea. It's, it, it's so good on so many different levels. It's the right thing to do. Um, and we got a lot of great <coughs> ideas that were thrown out tonight. But I think this is like, this is, we got to move on. Like, we gotta, can we just like yeah. table? I, I have, you know, usually I get booed out of one meeting every year. <laughs> <laughs> all the faculty and administration are going to love me, but all the students are going to. I think we got to table this, at least just at least to, to get to the second article, the third article, and start working through some of these. And do we have to pass this whole thing tonight? Yeah. We, we have to pass I would, I would like to. Right? You would like to, but do we have to? It's been like a formal. No. Okay, that's it. I'd like to make Dean's list. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to just go to a home? Yeah, just get it over with. Okay, okay. Uh, so we're going to come to a vote on our vote on whether we're going to accept Article 1. As amended. As amended. I, I think, point yes. of clarification from the corner here. Yeah. What, what is Article 1 going to say? I don't think everybody knows what I'm I can, I, I can, um, and if, if they do, they're lying. Okay, uh, the bullet points uh, that, that were amended and added were we're going to have a $250 scholarship. scholarship. Can we read it? Wait to, what's that? Can we read part of the Mine's one? just no, it's not exactly. I can read it. Uh, Katie Burke has it, so maybe okay. so I'm reading I'm from reading the top. Or <coughs> I'm reading the highlighted passage. What we added is what Everything. Okay. Article one. Article one academic honors incentive. Every executive board member who obtains Dean's List honors will receive a congratulatory letter from the president of SCG Incorporated signifying they have made the president's list. The SCG Incorporated Executive Council is not eligible for the program. The reward for non-graduating students shall be their choice with That's done. their name entered into a raffle to receive either a $250 scholarship awarded directly to the student or a reserved parking space for the semester. If a student selected from the raffle does not claim their prize within 30 days, a new student name will be drawn. Graduating seniors will be awarded with an honor cord to be worn at graduation. The honor cord will be awarded if the student has received three <coughs> semesters of academic excellence and student leadership simultaneously. If at any time a student vacates the executive board of a student organization, they will not be rewarded for that semester. And then a third bullet added, graduating SCG Incorporated seniors are eligible to receive an honor board. Okay. I have so another question. What is it, what is the definition of an executive board member? And by that I mostly mean like if you were an executive board member for a day, do you qualify? <coughs> it says right in the policy, the if any student time a student vacates the executive board of a student organization. They will not be rewarded for that semester. Oh, so whether they're in a position for a day, 
That's no. under the newly proposed changes. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you need to bring it to you? Yes, please. <laughs> Guys, I'm taking a field trip. Go over here. Okay, but don't Okay, so this is not really this. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the R R1 has been amended as Representative Burke has stated. We now move on to a vote. All those in favor of approving Amendment 1, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstentions? I abstain. Okay. Actually, I abstain also. I left the room for abortion, so. Okay. Uh, motion passes. So moved. Cool. Okay, we're now moving on to Article 2. <laughs> Alright, we didn't really change much in Article 2, so hopefully this will be quick. <laughs> this is one thing that everybody agreed on, was having an advisor to help us make a schedule. Um, the, uh, again, the only things we added were just clarifying statements. And um, I believe that Vice President Costa <coughs> clarified these. She was the one who was most vocal about Article 2, so correct me if I'm wrong, but we just added clarifying statements. And this one, we made it so it's not just for executive members, but it's for anybody in a student organization is eligible to come consult with our academic advisor on a first come, first serve basis because they don't have all free period. Well, they do, but they don't have, you know, all day. So, discuss. Vice President Costa. Um, what, I, I know that when the discussion was tossed around about this article specifically, that anyone who was either for or against this bill was for absolutely for this article specifically. So in focusing on this, one thing I really want, want to emphasize is that the person who ends up being appointed the advisor of this is someone who would be really, really student friendly and someone who would not only advise academically but maybe in a, in maybe in a more friendly sense as well. So that's what I just want to speak on behalf of that. Um, and I'll send it back to Deputy Speaker Ben Court. Treasure of day. Um, I was just going to kind of echo the sentiments that I think that this person is supposed to be kind of that go-to person that you talk about, your student involvement, your academics, your personal crisis with your boyfriend who distracted you from taking your exam. Um, not that that ever happened to me because I'm single life. <laughs> <laughs> brought something up like this to the Committee on Academic Advising. Um, they interviewed somebody for the uh, uh, Coordinator of Academic Advising, and some of the candidates that were really great for the coordinator position I think would be really great for this position, because they have a really dynamic understanding of students and what we face. And I think that I have to give them a lot of credit for what they do already. So just as uh, an FYI, if you guys have any questions about those candidates, I don't know if I'm allowed to express who they are now, but I would probably whisper something into Dr. Payne's ear about how wonderful I think they are and which one I think it should be. So that's all. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nixon. All right. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speakerman. Um, I just wanted to throw it out there just when you're looking for the perfect advisor. There's this term in HR Wonderland that I majored in slash the research world called work-life balance. And this entire article right here is all about work-life balance, um, no matter how you break it down. That's the overarching topic. So if you find a staff member or a faculty member who is familiar with issues pertaining to work-life balance, because you have students involved with all different walks of life, whether they work full-time or work part-time outside of their job, whether they're parents or whether they're grandparents or whether they're 18 or 38, that's what you're going to be looking for in that whole field of study. Just saying. It's called work-life balance. It's part of diversity management. And Sociology, so just, just a heads up. Thank you. Ms. Al? Um, I like this a lot, but I worry that the once a month part of it might be an issue only because the person is going to have limited time to talk to you, and if you have a problem, it just it might be an issue. That's I love the idea of it, that's my only concern. Treasurer Dave, did you have something to say about that? Oh. I, well, I think that's just an inconsistency. I think it's just an inconsistency with it saying out. once a month and then yeah. during non-lawyer yeah. service-free periods. That's why we changed it. So I think, I think you should say 
okay. advisor in the SEG Inc. office during non-lawyer, like if that's accepted as friendly, yeah. if that's okay with everybody. Does the body accept that as friendly? Cool. Okay. Uh, there's nobody left on the list, so we'll move on to a vote to accept Article 2 as amended. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> the vote passes. <laughs> okay. okay, we now move on to Article 3. Yes. Alright, so this is what I have to say about Article 3. We were joking in the meeting on Friday. What did I say, Rob? This is the meat of the bill? Yes. <laughs> that was our joke. We're going we're gonna um, to around the so meat. So I told, I told the three of them that personally, like everybody knows, I still support the GPA requirement. Um, so for me, I, I wrote this part as an addition to Article 3. Um, some of you obviously feel differently, but I'd just like to state now that I do support the GPA part of Article 3. Um, and if we get, obviously we're going to get into discussion about that on top of what I have here. Um, but Jordan and I do have some clarifying statements for Article 3, should we get that far in our discussion, hopefully we do. Um, so, discuss guys, let's go. Let's do this. Well. I kind of want to know, by a general show of hands, how many people want to argue about the original policy, like original Article 3 right now? Okay, that's five of us in the room. Um, yeah, sure. Six of us in the room want to argue about the original Article 3. How many people don't want to argue about the original <coughs> Article 3? Well, not argue, no, but but discuss. Talk about it. Discuss. discuss. Okay, if nobody wants to discuss anything, this is really unproductive. I'm calling you out. <laughs> um, because I, I would like to offer amendments to the original Article 3 if everyone is up for it, because I do, do still stand for the value of it. Um, and I think that it might make everybody more comfortable with it. So is everybody willing to tolerate me for just like five minutes? Thanks, John. <laughs> well, more like, probably like seven. Some obnoxious. Um, so, in the original document that was passed, um, under Article 3, stipend hour requirements, um, it says these requirements can only be reviewed by student government every five year, academic years, it essentially saying that student community government cannot review them. Um, obviously, we all know, courtesy of the paper and other people, uh, holla. Um, that that's a violation of proper rules of order. So, I felt that these policies when we pass them definitely have to be reviewed within a certain amount of time. So I said that I personally felt changing the word these requirements should be reviewed by student parliament at a maximum at, in, at a maximum of five academic years, saying that they have to be reviewed in five academic years, saying that they can't like bare minimum they like, have to be reviewed in five years. Like they can be reviewed before that, they can be reviewed up to that, but they have to be reviewed within the five year mark. Um, I felt that that was more friendly and within Robert's Rules of Order because saying it should be, not it has to be, it absolutely must be, it's not an absolute statement, um, it's more of an advisory comment. Um, so I don't know if I want to make that friendly, I'm just going to read my amendments and then make a formal motion. Um, then I added a second, to the second bullet point, or the first bullet point immediately underneath that statement. Members must maintain at least half-time enrollment and I put in a comma saying, as defined by the college, comma, while receiving a stipend and meet the following standards of satisfactory academic process, progress. Then I moved on to the more stuff. <laughs> um, right below repeated courses will be included in a total number of credit hours attempted. I wrote and bolded because I feel it's like really important. Students must fall below both required successful completion and minimum cumulative GPA requirement for these standards to apply, which alleviates a lot of the pressure that everybody felt <coughs> on February 6th. The other thing I did <laughs> was reduce the study hours from 468 to 246. And we also made this program only eligible for executive board members who are stipend receiving versus the entire stipend receiving board because we feel that that's unfair to staff writers or photographers who receive a $3 payment to take a picture if it gets printed, um, that that's not fair to them to force them into the hours that a full-time executive board member like myself 
or like anybody else in the room would have to do. And that's not fair because it's not the same dedication of time. So those are my, my amendments. I'd like to make a formal motion. Second. second. A formal motion by Ms. Treasurer Day and a second by Speaker Escobar. Uh, discussion? Uh, well, well, we use the... Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah, we, we use the original list. Yeah, right. yeah okay. Uh, Mr. Santer, you first on the list. Thank you, Deputy Speaker Van Court. Uh, first off, I wanted to say thank you to Treasurer Day for at least addressing a lot of the concerns I know I had with this. Because, I mean, obviously the Pablo Roberts order was it needed to be fixed. But my, because there's a couple of things that I see wrong with this bill overall that I can discuss, but I don't want to get in the way of at least making these amendments first. So I, my suggestion is that for anyone who wants to talk, including myself, that we at least pass these amendments first because I think anyone can say they're at least all valid and better, and then move on to the actual discussion. That's just my opinion. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, anyone else can still talk, but I'm just making that suggestion <laughs> because right. that was before we get into a whole big argument in this whole mm -hmm. rabbit hole. Right, okay. Uh, I'll speak this one. Um, so, no on subsidiary boards? Yes, because I think that a lot of students were concerned that subsidiary. I, I, I personally feel, and this is personally, um, feel that subsidiary boards should be included. However, upon a lot of issue and concern, there is a lot more responsibility placed upon executive board members, but I would be open to it saying executive and subsidiary because that does not fall under staff. And I think that was a lot of people's concerns about staff members, um, which I'm okay with. Like, I know Anchor TV and WXAN specifically have subsidiary boards and then you have the editorial board for the anchor uh, programming specifically only has their executive board we only have our executive board the but the cabinet yeah. is our subsidiary so i'm totally comfortable with including those as in those but i don't know how the rest of the body feels i do feel like executive board is the only way that that would am amendment would be would pass and i'll be real with you i want this to pass okay. um do i have a yes um yeah i agree that the staff shouldn't be included you know, that definitely wasn't, that was definitely a good question, a good concern about the policy. Yeah, I don't, I don't want, um, you know, everyone to worry about, you know, people write for anchor, that's just that, that's just writing, getting like $10 a <coughs> That's not who this policy is addressing. However, I, I, I do want subsidiary boards. I'm going to make a friendly amendment to add subsidiary boards, executive boards and subsidiary boards. Does the body accept that as friendly? No. 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 Then I'm going to make a motion to add subsidiary boards. Okay, to it. Yeah, there's a motion. Yeah, we have a You can just go second. You can just go one more. Well, we know. We're, this is the final stage. Yeah, this is oh, this is the second one, one, right? Yeah, we, we can't here. go further than this. All right. So we can wait. If you want to make an amendment, so we're at the cliff. We're at the cliff. We can't go deeper than this. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise, we're in limbo. Or we jump. In other words. So make your formal amendment to the amendment motion. Oh, I can. Um, then I would like to make what? An amendment to the amendment. Amendment to the amendment yep. of adding um, subsidiary. subsidiary boards to the line where it addresses Well, the there's, only, um, <coughs> there's only specifically stated in um, the third bullet from the, on the last, well, I mine's shorter because I got rid of stuff. Um, on the last page, and it says these requirements will be applied to the stipend policies as distributed by Student Community Government Inc. to all, so it would say executive board and subsidiary board members of stipend receiving organizations with that formal amendment. I don't know if there was a second though. Uh, we do not have a second yet. We have a formal amendment made by Speaker Escobar. Second. Um, second. And I have a second by President Beckett. Discussion? This is a new discussion now, right? Okay. All right, don't cross that out. Oh yeah, okay. I'll just uh, treasure day. That's been that Um I am personally indifferent to either decision. I think either decision would reflect properly on the purpose. Um you can agree to disagree with me. I don't care. <laughs> to be quite frank. <laughs> but um I think that either decision that's made would be extremely valid. So that's it. Mr. Center. 
Thank you, Deputy Speaker Bancourt. Again, I won't want to talk about the whole bill, just my concerns, but I will say about the idea of adding subsidy board members. I want to point out that this bill, we've been focusing on student leaders, we focus on executive board members, and I think we should stay consistent in that aspect. As someone who's been both a subsidy board member and an executive board member, I can tell you that the amount of work that those two have to do and the amount of responsibilities are uh, vastly different. Because, you know, I could be traffic director at XI in my former position, and I did not do nearly as much work now as obviously I do with the general manager. I feel that if we are going to try to pass anything sort of GPA, and we are going to talk about student leaders, we should focus at least solely, and if we get, want to do some trial period, then solely focus on executive board members and teaching those to them. That's my opinion. Okay. Mr. Dean. Uh, yeah, just say that if we're so like torn over this issue, let's just start small, see how it goes. If it goes well, maybe we can add subsidiary board later on. But let's just start small and let's see how it goes first. And that's okay. Um, here, here. Mr. Dean being the last one, let's move on to a vote. All those in favor of approving the amendment to the amendment, please say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, <laughs> could you remind uh, the body what we're voting on? Fair. I'll, 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 just to clarify, I'll remind by what the amendment to the amendment is. Uh, Speaker Escobar presented a amendment to Treasurer, yeah. Treasurer Day's original amendments to Article 3, um, which uh, the, 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 to include the subsidiary boards in the discussion of uh, the GPA reform. Um, so, so, now so now we have move on to the vote. <laughs> All those, uh, all, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. no. Abstentions? Me. <laughs> um, yeah, with, uh, with, with, uh, it is. Yeah, you know, it is. It is. So, so now we, we now move on to the original ones. We're back to original discussion on Yes, and the, and the original ones. No, I don't, I don't know who's on the list. Okay. Right. Um, we now move on to Mr. Martin. To the original We're list. We're talking about the original amendments now. Back to the original list. Which like everything exactly I just right. proposed. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, the ones that Charlie was proposed. Okay, so hypothetically, I can make an amendment to the amendment as Travis did. Hypothetically. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, let's see that. Okay. Uh, hypothetically, I could call the question the vote right now. So I'm going to call the question the vote right now for Jordan's amendment. Okay. Uh, so I, I have a motion to call a question. Do I have a second? Sure. Second, second by Treasurer Day. Um, no, no discussion. We now move on to a vote. All those in favor, we say aye. 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 All opposed? No. We're, we're voting to call the question, guys. Call the question on discussion of the motion of amendment that Jordan made. This time. <laughs> and we did a vote. And abstentions. Representative Kamas would abstain. And the motion does pass. <coughs> so now we're going to move on to voting on the amendments of Article 3 that Treasurer Day proposed. And there's no more discussion. So we all. Can I have clarification? Yes. Because I have. There's a, a Article 3 that we've got that says GPA requirements for class credit. No, we're talking about the original one. We decided to talk about the original one. And then that's an addition. So that's not Article 3. No. It's Article 3 is what we. On the amendments or what's done? Study hour. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So going on the amendments to Article 3. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. So moved. <coughs> <coughs> <Okay. laughs> you just have to say. We're going to go back to the original list. Um, uh, Mr. Martin, the first time. Once again, I don't know. I don't, am I Did you just approve Article 3? No. No, we no, approved the amendment. Are you paying attention? Yeah, paying attention. Staff representative Gunning. Yeah, well, I stapled it to the wall, so we're going to Staff representative Gunning has the floor. And we're discussing. 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 Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I apologize. Uh, Miss Allen, you're next on the list. I still 
can't get over the fact that we're requiring students to have a GPA that they have to have anyway. And then we're possibly putting others in this position of if they're writing a check, they know who does and who doesn't get stipend checks. And I I think that we're overstepping our bound to put something in place that has the right heart to it, but doesn't have the right language or programs. Okay. Um, Mr. Gosling? Mr. Santori? Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you. All right, so obviously, uh, uh, President Pecchio, uh, Vice President Costa, and Secretary Baldwin and I all sat down and tried to come up with at least, if this, because we all, because we obviously had disagreements over this type of policy, we at least tried to come up with something else to discuss that there. Uh, in the last meeting, uh, rep uh, Staff Representative uh, Paolucci said, guys, before you do anything, do your homework. So, as President Peck has said, I did my homework. This is, a, I just know, this is the original thing I wrote before we, we came up with a lot of the changes we made here tonight, which are great, by the way. This thing is seven pages long. I'm not going to read it all because a lot of it's changed at this point. So, and I plus want to keep it brief. But there are some concerns. I have some fundamental concerns. I have some just logistical concerns about this bill. Just real quick, um, about the credit hours and study hours things. Um, I, and uh, Dean of Students, Dr. King, can correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. Please do so, because I got this off the college website, so it might not be the whole uh, If you uh, place an academic probation, which would occur if you fall below this GPA, it means you are not allowed to take more than 14 credits for the next period that you want to roll at rent, excluding some. It also means you are prevented from registering for the following semester until you have met with your advisor. Is that correct, Dr. King? Is that just? You always yeah, well, it's, it's universal now. Yeah, it's universal now. So, yeah. So, I don't know if the whole point, I, it's maybe just listening, having the credit hours is 16 and 18. I don't know if it's really relevant, having, relevant having it there. Like, if I could make it a friendly member to strike that line, because if you can't technically even you can legally do that. I mean, you, you, you can get some permission from your students. So I'd say, I, I don't know if I can want to make a friendly amendment if people have no problem with me striking that last line, but that's my interpretation of what's off the college website. Right. <coughs> Could you say what you're talking Oh, I would say the, the 16, 18 credit hours and the six study hours to go along with it. I think the Treasurer Day has something to say, real. As a person who's been on academic probation, that yeah. statement is true. Yes. Um, yes. I've only taken 14 credits every semester yes. that I've been here. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so your statement is accurate. My question is, though, and this might be better answered by Dr. Kane. You can go right ahead. <laughs> um, even though he's texting. Me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I don't have <laughs> Neither does my mom. <laughs> um, can you have below a 2.0 cumulative GPA and still take anywhere from 16 to 18 credits? Is there any way? Yes. Well then, I think okay. that answers the question. Alright, that answers my question then. Um, so I'm just going to get the, as both President Peck and I the meat of the whole thing. Right? And that is, the fundamental problems I just have with the stipend and study hour requirements. Now let's read this real quick. <clears throat> the biggest problem with this and with this part of the bill is it, it seems to imply, at least implicitly, maybe not explicitly, that the positions themselves might lead student leaders to making poor academic choices. I didn't get involved to the end of my sophomore year here on campus. Uh, I don't know how I, I'll just a quick show of hands. How many of you have gotten involved here on campus? Four years. I did my year sophomore year real quick. I'm just curious. Wait, what? Uh, yes, but sophomore year or, or freshman year. How many of you got involved here on campus? Quick show of hands. Okay, and including transfer, in, yeah, in all that stuff. You'll see it first to two years here. Uh, I can say I used to be one of those students who went to class, the library, Donovan, and then home. So in other words, I was your typical Rick student. I have a friend who I hung around with eventually in the cafe here, Rick, and. 
None of them were student leaders or had any positions of importance, and, and some of them never went to class. In fact, two of them ended up dropping out of rec because they were simply not academically inclined. And if they weren't hanging out at the cafe, they would have been somewhere else. But I know where they would not have been, which is class. Which leads me, it's in correlation my second fundamental course with this bill, is that ultimately we can only try to make students care, but you can't force them to care. And assigning study hours, I don't think, is going to do that. Simply because they're already on, they're already on academic creation. They already lost their financial aid at this point. So at this point, they've already lost thousands of dollars from the government in financial aid. I don't think taking away, that the possibility of taking away a small stipend check is going to do anything. And that's, not, and that's just an idea where if you want to, this whole thing is about in making an incentive for students to do better. So I just think this fails in an incentive. I have no problem trying to pass real solutions. I see the good intent with this, but I just think that, sorry, because I had to rephrase this originally, is that you have, you just, you create the problem now where like, you just can't force students to care, which is the big thing. And the other thing is too, it's my other in correlation with my so that's my one big point is that you know you're gonna have students who are not academically inclined no matter what it just so happens that a lot of them tend to sometimes get student leader positions and so that's just one thing I had and my other big I um, fundamental idea that I was wrong with this bill I think is that the 2.0 GPA now again I did my homework at least I think I did and. Here it is. Uh, this is also from the college website. Again, Dr. Kane, you know, you please correct me if I'm wrong because I don't look foolish. Uh, your, your record is reviewed for academic dismissal only at the end of the spring semester. Your credits are compared to your cumulative grade point average. At the end of the spring semester, you are academically, academically dismissed if, and it goes on the list, if you have between 30 and 59 credits, attempted transfer efficiency, and your cumulative GPA is lower than 1.75. Uh, 60 to 89 if it's lower than 1.9. And if it's 90 above, uh, and your cumulative GPA is lower than 2. And it also goes to say you cannot be ac academically dismissed at your end of your first semester rate. Instead, you can place on academic grade. Are any other things wrong, Dr. Kane? No, I think that's right. So, okay, right. thank yeah. you. Uh, <coughs> so, the point being is that with this GPA, with these requirements we currently have here on the table for GPA, if they fall below these numbers by the end of spring semester, they're already going to be dismissed from rec. I mean, I, that's not my answer point, but that's just, I'm saying that because I also bold this from the college website, and it says, oh, bless you, uh, failure to maintain the minimum cumulative GPA at the end a given semester results in the students being placed on academic probation or being dismissed from degree candidacy. Students who are dismissed or placed on probation are notified in, rec in writing by the record office. So my thing with this bill, and I think again, this is the reason why I work with President Peck here for four hours on a Friday, is because I do want to see something come out of this. I think so far in the first two articles, we already saw a lot of great stuff come out of this. My big thing is that I think that the fundamental idea of why this should be put in place is misguided in the first place. And I think that the numbers and logistics themselves just don't work. And my third main point that I find wrong with this bill, and the body can feel free to agree with me, disagree with me, the rocks in the after meeting, whatever have you. Uh, and I want to say this because I don't, I don't want to again keep us till midnight because the building does close and we have to leave then, whether or not we like it or not. Um, I feel that this part of the bill it creates exclusiveness, not inclusiveness. It creates division, not unity. Student leaders, some of us may be, but those who are truly student leaders accept the responsibility and consequences that come with these actions. <coughs> Mr. Bolton, who you know has been here the entire time, by the way, which should be commended, who has taken his time to sit here tonight, and of course, Mr. Fees is here. But my he, he quoted, you know, Uncle Ben from Spider-Man, you know. With great power comes great responsibility. And that means being responsible and being holding yourself hopeful to your own actions and your own words. And I think we need real solutions that can assist students. And I think that, again, I, ho I wholeheartedly agree with the intense spirit of this. 
One of the greatest things that often goes to waste in this world is the opportunity that a college or education can afford us. And we must not let those opportunities go to waste. So I, I just wanted to put those points out there so when we address this, that my reason why I, I oppose this in the first place and why I oppose it still now is on the table. But thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Treasurer Day. Okay, so I have some language coming your way. Um, because I realized that there were a couple things that I didn't address as issues that I feel are really vital. Um, and so, coming your way. I don't really care about anything else. Um, no, I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna seek for them to be friendly, but I'm gonna announce them first and go from there. Um, so I'd like to add as a last bullet point under everything, study hours, chief of staff being turned in, um, all that crap. New bullet point, if a student falls under the purview of disability services, they are held to those standards of academic achievement. So that was one concern that I forgot to address that I feel needs to be addressed. And the other one um, is the dean of students will privately review the academic status of stipend receiving students as is a right offer afforded to them by the Family Educational Rights and Privacy <laughs> Act. So that way it voids all the issues that were mentioned in the and I like to see that that be accepted with unanimous consent. Does the body accept that as friendly? Friendly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not done, I don't think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, um, so somebody actually just whispered and asked me for clarification on those two things that were just passed. Uh, no, I'm just going to hand it over. Um, what I actually feel about this bill as a person who is extremely affected by it, um, Everybody just assumes that Travis and I hate each other. <laughs> um, that's a lie. We get along actually really well. And at the end of the day, we have the same goal, uh, to graduate, leave brick, and be successful. Um, I think that's everybody's goal here around the table. We are student leaders because we're supposed to be self-motivated and mo motivate others. That is the purpose of student community government. Um, reading the mission statement, because I'd like to cite some more stuff from the anchor. Student Parliament acts as a central forum for the student body to bring forth and address issues and concerns affecting students at Rhode Island College. A student that, an issue that's affecting students at Rhode Island College is graduation rates. And that, to me, is a fundamental issue that student community government should care about. I am a classic example of everything going wrong. <coughs> I've had medical problems. I lost a family member. I've been through court cases. I've had my own lackadaisical senioritis kicking in since high school. Um, to say, as a person who's been through a lot, I'm not trying to be rude, but I have no sympathy or empathy for people who make excuses. I have my own excuses, but I own up to the fact that I'm, at the end of the day, responsible for my academics. I think everybody in the room knows at the end of the day they're responsible for the position that they put themselves in. I think, can we all agree on that? Yes? Yes, I like that we agree. Um, yes, some people have extenuating circumstances. You should talk to the Dean of Students and he'll guide you in the right direction on how to handle those things. Um, Dr. King is a valuable resource and I think everybody forgets that he is a resource and that's why I said it on the February 6th meeting. Um, I will stand by the fact that at the end of the day, our goal is to leave Rhode Island College. I love it. I love being here. This is a sick disease. Um, <laughs> I have caught something, and I don't know what it is, but I think I'd like to call it student involvement, student leadership, and it's a bug. Um, some people get absorbed by it. Some people forget. Some people actually, looking at student community government's graduation rate, most of our officers graduate after being here for at least five years, and even some of our officers that have been in office for the last five years have just dropped out. Some of our officers have held multiple positions and are still here. Um, looking at our own historical record, I can say that we are still, we are still personally affected by this as student community government. Um, I'm still personally affected by this as a member of student community government. I'm still affected by this as a member of the student body. You guys forget that at the end of the day, we're not the only people. Yes, it's only stipend receiving members. But how many students do you think even know that their student activity fee is going towards paying a monthly stipend to you? How many students?
students do you think do think that you deserve to get paid? Exactly my point. We get paid for what we do because it's we take on a responsibility that we have to honor. Um, as a person who's failed academically, I fully understand the purpose and the reason for wanting this. Um, Travis and I had quite a bit of a quarrel when this first came around. I told him he was a sneaky, sneaky little man. <laughs> and I was really mad. <laughs> and then I thought about the reality that I have bigger things to deal with. And if only I had four hours a week to study, the money I'd pay to study. I get paid to go to a computer lab and have downtime when I'm, I'm, go I'm going to work and I can't even study when nobody's there on a Thursday night because y'all know what you're doing. <laughs> the point of the story is that we can't lose track of our academics. I've been there. I've done it for too long. Um, people in this room have been here since 2007. People have been in this room have been here since 2008. People who have been here since 2009 are actually graduating on time. And congratulations to everybody else because you still have a couple years ahead of you. Um, you can't forget that you've been here for a really long time. Whether you're going part time, whether you're going full time, whether you've had extenuating circumstances, you can't forget that the idea at the end of the day is to get a freaking diploma. I am planning to walk across that stupid stair set of stairs at the Murray Center because my parents have been force feeding me education since I was five. And if you guys think that getting a diploma and receiving a stipend is more important than getting a diploma, then I don't know what you're doing. I'd rather get a diploma than a stipend any day. Because at the end of the day, the diploma's gonna get me a job. The diploma's gonna get me farther. It's gonna get me into grad school. It's gonna get me a career opportunity. It's gonna make me a better person because I'll have more advantages than a person who left high school and didn't have one. What about the people who can't finish school because they don't have the money to? I am in that position. I am paying off $4,000 this semester to come to Rhode Island College and argue with you people. <laughs> I just paid off $1,200 on what day was it? February 19th. I think that it's completely irrational to assume that people with academic struggles are going to be offended by this. I think people with academic struggles need a kick in the pants. And I don't care if you guys are going to disagree with me because I feel like my opinion is my opinion. Um, but I really need to reiterate, no matter how many times I say it, that our goal here is to graduate, to walk away with a diploma. To see and be with our peers in our caps and gowns. To switch our tassel from one side to the other. We're not here to receive a stipend. And that's all I have. Thank you. That's President Costa. Thank you. Okay, so my honest opinion about this, and it's just two words, personal responsibility. If we have a safety net here, to fall back on and someone to constantly be there and all right, you fell below, let's put you in the study hours. Oh, you didn't do the study hours, we're gonna take away your stipend. It's to the point where, fine, you've been helped here by someone designating doing your time management for you, but what do you do when you get that diploma and you're out in the real world? Do you, there's not gonna be a policy there to tell you, oh, you need to set time aside to go and um, take your kid to daycare today or you you fell below on paying your bills, so um, we're going to have you do, uh, uh, you know, you get a penalty for that, but we'll, you know, it's just, to me, I just, I want, I, I know that you can't expect self-motivation from everyone, but in my, in my opinion, it's, if life, life goes on, life happens, you know, I am, in college is a growing period, and I understand that, but, it's just, it's things that you're going to be facing for the rest of your life. And I'm, I'm at a loss for words. It makes, it makes sense in my head what I'm thinking. But I'm, I guess I'm speaking more from a personal point of the fact that I feel as though there shouldn't be a safety net or something to, to push you along at the end of the day. But that's just my personal opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, the community I grew up in, I'm 
one of the very few <coughs> that actually reaches out to um, you know get a higher education degree. Fortunately, less than all, you know, to be in Rhode Island College and um, have the experiences that I can have. Um, but there's a lot of people that cannot afford to go to college and would love to absolutely, you know, be in these seats, especially these seats right here. You know, we're getting paid <coughs> to discuss, you know, improving our campus. Um, and when I came in as a freshman, uh, a lot of the uh, older uh, students that I've become friends with would tell me, oh, you know, a lot of students, they, uh, they're just milking the system, they're just uh, taking money, and they're just, uh, you know, taking these jobs, and they're not even going to class, and, and that was in 2008. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, Tim came to speak, which, by the way, I had no idea, that Tim came to speak in favor of basically this requirement right here. Tim, have you ever received a stipend from SCG having been once? I have never received a stipend for any of the work I do on campus. Other than my RA stipend. But I get it. And RA has a GPA requirement, right? What's that? Does it have a GPA requirement? 2.5. His opinion, <coughs> you can you can think that I'm crazy, bad guy, I'm wrong or anything. His opinion times a lot of the students who aren't sitting here. I, I, I swear to you, his speech was on point in terms of what students who are not involved really think. We've, in my opinion, we've watered down a lot, at least Article 1, Article 2 we kept, because everyone agreed with one. We already took out Article 4. Article 3, we take out GPA requirements. There's no point in passing laws. Because that opinion right there, from a student who never received a stipend, and that's times by so many, because that, that, that's, that, that's why I'm bringing up this proposal. There's so, there's so many students, there's so many voices that I feel just doesn't, doesn't get heard. You know, we think sort of in our bubble of our friends. Um, and it's hard, it's hard for us student leaders to really connect with, you know, the mass majority. And we usually talk to each other to gain ideas and bounce ideas. But that right there, that's popular opinion if we, have, if we held a poll. I'm telling you. Again, you have to believe me. You think I'm crazy? Why not? Um, we we need this for study hours. I've seen so many friends drop out, and if we if we had a safety net, they wouldn't. Talk about facilitating the growth of student organization. How about facilitating the growth of our academics? Making sure us as student leaders pass. These are very minimal requirements. Just just get a D. Get a C minus here. You know, just 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 keep it keep moving, keep going, you know? But we're not asking you to be A students. I'm far from an A student. <laughs> you know, very far from it. Uh, I I've, I've come close to losing my financial aid. I had to get a I had to get a kick in the butt. But I, I I can tell you this, coming as a freshman, if I saw these requirements, I would never ever want to get anywhere nearly as close to these requirements if I knew that I was going to lose my position, potentially my stipend. Again, we're privileged. We are blessed in order to have stipends. We're talking about 60 to 100 students. You know, this is, this is a, or maybe roughly, I, I'm, I'm pulling numbers out of the air, at least with that one. Um, we, we are blessed to have that opportunity. And usually, you're a blessed person in order to reach out for that opportunity and excel in that position, be a student leader. And I see a lot of people that have a lot of potential to actually get that diploma, go out and make, you know, reach whatever their dreams may be. But then, as Jordan Day explained it, they get attached to this drug that we've created, this, this, this drug of comfortability here. Um, receiving a stipend in this community. It's real, okay? Um, that problem is real, and we've seen, and you'd be lying, if you didn't tell me you haven't seen at least one student that could have been helped by this policy. You, you, you'd be crazy to tell me that this won't actually help. Uh, who cares about the difference of ideologies? 
we're here as student leaders to help each other. Am I, am I wrong in saying that, to help each other? Don't we all want to graduate? Don't we all want to help? And, and again, some of the peers, uh, Hillary Costa talked about self-responsibility. Some of our peers, you know, you gotta remember, they're young. They're young too. They're in college, they, they might need a little help. If they have the potential to reach out to the leadership, but they're failing academics, they might not like class. They might learn in a different way. They might feel that being a student leader is what they're taking out of college, is what they're learning. But then they forget, oh, I, I gotta do class. But you know what, I, I'd rather write a resolution for parliament, or I'd rather throw an awesome event for my radio station, or I, I, I need to write this, this kick-ass article in the anchor, or I need to do some editing anchor TV, because you know what, maybe they could be bored of class. I'm not a big fan of going to, going to class. Ask, ask, ask anyone. Ask her, I'm taking many classes with her. Ask her, I'm not, I'm not a big fan. I'm, I, I learned differently. Yeah, yeah, I learned differently, okay? Um, I don't know, maybe I have ADD, who knows? <laughs> but, again, we're not trying to take away stipends at all. We're not trying to take away stipends. We're giving study hours. And we even amended to put it less. Two, four, and six. And we took away subsidiary boards, and we took away parliament members, we're only focused on executive board members. Yes, the, 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 the people that are going to do the most work. So let's make sure the executive board members of our student organizations, they don't ever have to fall below these requirements because they'll see them and be like, all right, I don't need to fall below those. I'll make sure I pass. I'll make sure I'm above them. And if I fall below, guess what? I need to go do my study hours if I want to get paid for the work I really want to do. Again, we're just... I feel our, our demographic is going to be helping our students, not a big fan of classes, very smart, very intelligent. They lose the wayside of a degree. We need to help those kids get a degree because they have tons of potential. They show in our community every day. We see a whole bunch of leaders like that. But then, for whatever reason, they don't like class. They don't want to do these papers. They don't want to read these books that the professors are giving them. We need to help them. Otherwise, we're not doing anything. Thank you. President Pecchia? Thanks. Well, I didn't know Travis was before me, so obviously he still echoed what I was going to say. Just kidding. Um, but, I mean, obviously I echo his sentiments. It's pretty much spot on to what I was going to say. I just want to touch upon one thing um, that has been thrown around is the fact that we're talking about what it will be like in the real world. And what I would say to that is you've got to get there first. You really do. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, being in college, it's real, it's teaching you responsibility, but is it really personal responsibility? Are you doing that if you're below 2.0? Probably not. You're really not. So how, is you, how are you learning anything here? Then when you get to the real world and you don't pay your bills, you're still not learning anything because you're behind on your bills. When are you going to learn if it's not here? When are you going to learn? That's, that's the question I'm asking, and I, I don't see requiring students to go to the library for an hour and read for their class as coddling them. Um, you should probably be doing that anyway. Uh, I, I just see this as encouraging them. I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I'm just saying that like, student <coughs> parliament, student government, student everything. You came here, you didn't come here and be like, you know, well, at least personally, I didn't come here and say the first day, I'm gonna work for president of SCG, that's why I came to Rick. That's not what I did. I came here because we had an awesome office program because we had the program that I wanted to graduate with. We have public administration. I came here for academics, believe it or not. Surprise, surprise. Well, sure, I joined the first meeting my freshman year. That's because I met Josh Laguerre at Student, student Activities Day, and he convinced me to join. I, I just can't emphasize student enough. I mean, obviously, what, what I said earlier, academics are very important to me. It's never been something that I'd like to, to take any less seriously than I would take any other responsibility. Um, so I obviously echo the sentiments of Jordan, I echo the sentiments of Travis. Uh, clearly you know how I stand on this issue. I just can't emphasize enough that this is not a punishment for people. We're just encouraging each other to do our best and get out of here. So, so people like us have an example to look up to and say, wow, I can't do it in four years. I can't have that responsibility and I can't have that GPA and I can still do what I want and have an awesome resume and get a great job when I enter the real world. Dun, dun, dun. The real world. Where I learned in college to prepare myself. That's where I learned it. This is where you're supposed to learn.
learn it. You're not supposed to fall flat on your face in the real world. Probably will. I'm 21. I don't know everything. I'm not high and mighty. I don't. I talk to my mom all the time. She's like, you're going to learn it. You're going to learn this. We're still going to learn after we get there. But at least give yourself the chance for the foundation here where you're supposed to get it. That concludes my remarks. Thank you. Ms. Burke? Well, since Kyle and Travis took the majority of what I want to say, I just want to say, reiterate that, um, that we should be in these positions like Tim is, like he's a perfect example. We should be here without wanting a stipend, without gaining a stipend. You shouldn't want to be part of the anchor or SIM or student government because you earn a stipend. That is just a perk and an extra thing on top of it all. You should be here because you want to either help your college community, uh, build your resume, um, make yourself more rounded, get real life experience in whatever field. You should not need or want that stipend for, like you should just be doing these things for yourself and a stipend is just an extra. And no one's even saying it, it's being taken away. That's one thing that keeps getting thrown around. Stipends are not disappearing. We're not taking them away. They're not going anywhere. Um, but if you want to be a student leader, you should strive for these things for yourself. Because if you don't, then what kind of student leader are you? Student leader, student, again. But since I was asked, I pass the floor to John. Yeah. Hi. First, I guess. Yes, that works. Um, I just want to start by saying I loved everything that Travis, Jordan, Kyla, everybody said. You should be responsible for your own actions. The good thing I do like about this is it does provide that safety net. I do understand your concerns with you will not receive that in the world, real world. But I once had a coach in football who told me the greatest knowledge I've ever known. It's practice makes permanent. Not perfect, permanent. Everything you do is a learned action. If you learn to be responsible, you will be more inclined to be responsible in your life. Obviously, yes, you're going to have kids, you're going to screw up because parents screw up. In your job, you're probably going to miss a deadline or once or twice, and you're probably going to get reprimanded. You might even get fired once or twice, but you know what? It's when those things happen, picking yourself back up and putting yourself out there. That's what responsibility is. Responsibility is taking what happened to you and improving, using your past actions for future motives. I've received, I've, I've done everything in the book. I've taken horrible grades. I've gone on academic probation. I took a semester off to work on a cruise ship. I worked every single day for six months, not a day off. I'm sorry, three days off. The real world, you're expected to work and work and work. And if you don't work, then you get, that's when you get in trouble. So if you take responsibility for yourself, you're not, and you learn that responsibility, you're not going to have any problems. And I believe this safety net, for lack of a better word, I hate that term, but is only going to help. And another point I'm going to make before I yield the floor, give the floor back is the one problem I have had with this bill. Yeah, okay, act. <laughs> um, is the small things like medical leaves and things like that. Things that would happen to a student <coughs> coming into the campus, which now that it's been amended, I see no problem with the act as amended. Thank you. Floor's back here. Okay. Tim, I would like to yield the first Tim. Um, I'll be very brief because I know it's just getting late. I have other people on the speaker's list. Um, but two things, I mean, and responsibility was really um, what John was talking about. And that's what this act is all about. I have three former residents on here, one of which is our president, and I was responsible for being a role model to my residents, whether that's socially, but more importantly, academically. If my residents knew that I wasn't going to class, if my residents knew I wasn't doing well in class, they are not going to go to class. They are not going to be want to be inclined to do that. It's our responsibility as student leaders to set good examples for future student leaders. The whole reason why I'm at this meeting is so that this act can be put in place for better student leaders. I wouldn't be sitting here on Wednesday night when I really want to go to an event on the other side of Kansas. We are responsible for creating a legacy here at Rhode Island College. That's why all of you joined student government, is to create something that will be here forever. 
Granted, this act might be reviewed, apparently should be reviewed in the next five, or so, five years or so. But it's an act that will allow student leaders to be all the best they can be, to be the complete student leader. A complete student leader is great when it comes to executive board responsibilities, which I, of course, have done today when I went to student community government to ask for money. Press me, press me plug, yeah. Um, but there's nothing right now, and according to the student community government mission, and I don't have it on me, but I know it says something about developing student organization, e-board members, and members. And that means all assets of the student, and that's what we're forgetting here. We're getting caught up in, well, personal. Like, I personally, this act wouldn't affect me because I have a 3.3 GPA, but if you need to stop thinking about personal, and if it affects you personally, there are still some nets here that will help you, guide you to get your stipend that you're so worried about. But you need to be focused on what the future is. And the future for this is to put something in place that SCG is designed to, to encourage student leaderships to put school first. And if that means by just acquiring a 2.0 GPA, Travis put it best, 2.0 GPA is attending class, more or less. If you attend class, and you talk to students, and you work with OASIS, and you work with all the resources that are on this campus, I can nearly guarantee you, you'll graduate in four years. It's people who don't know about those resources. It's our job to tell our student leaders what those resources are on campus. So that's, I mean, that's about that. I'm sorry. Okay, so, Aaron Buckley, I will hear from you. Hi, Yeah, I'm going to take it back to watch me again. I'm actually going to take a personal track to what I have to say. The speaker and the president are correct in, in everything that they said. Uh, well, actually, about the 20 minutes ago by now. I graduated. I did successfully. I actually uh, got to graduate cum laude. And uh, I tried very, very hard to, to bring my GPA up to that level because I have ADHD, uh, the hyperactive form of ADD. I will. When, when I was in classes, I would literally do hmm, anything except my homework because I didn't really have much, uh, much not control, but much drive, much motivation for, um, uh, for actually following, following through on my classwork. Since my dean can't actually criticize me anymore because I graduated, God, I skipped class. <laughs> I would do anything I could, whether it was in the anchor or in student government here. I'd work on resolutions instead of doing homework. Pretty much anything except my classwork. I listened to the, uh, to the amendments you've made to this bill here. This is a good act. Quite frankly, I'll admit some weakness here. I probably, at some points in my student career, would have been uh, subject to some of the study hours and such that uh, you guys are providing as a sort of uh, negative incentive uh, kind of system. And you know what? I would have been really grateful for it. Because if I wanted to stay involved, keep in mind, being involved on campus is optional. You know, kind of like uh, if the state governments want federal money, they have to obey by some rules like the drinking age and such. If you are becoming a stipend uh, receiving officer of an organization, you're entering into a contract with the organization and with the student government. So I don't really see an issue with providing incentives or some type of framework for <coughs> students that want to be in those leadership positions. If I was told that really to keep getting my, uh, my anchor and my speakership stipends, and such. Uh, I was speaker for a year and a half before, um, before Mr. Escobar here, Speaker Escobar. I would have really appreciated a force coming in, uh, just like the counseling center did for me when I was actually being diagnosed for ADHD and the help I received there. I would have appreciated that framework a whole lot. It might have actually made a difference and maybe raised my graduating GPA uh, pretty significantly. I really would have appreciated this kind of system, and I'm glad that you guys are putting this forward. I watched the, yeah, you guys had some whole cathartic release earlier about the Facebook back and forth and such. This bill as amended, guys, yeah, this is a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes my views and other comments. <laughs> <laughs> the housekeeper comes in at 6.30 if you want to talk about it. Thank you. 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 Thank
car a long time ago. Um, okay, so I really don't want to beat any dead horses. Oh, it's okay.
Because if it was a safety net, it would be at a 2.10 or a 2.25 or something to you hit before you hit the 2.0 or under. It's not a safety net if it kicks in at the same time you lose your financial aid. If you want to make it a little bit higher so you hit that before you hit the ground, that I could understand. Are you passing the floor? I am passing the floor to you. Would you recommend putting these requirements in tax for up I would recommend it for the simple fact that if you want to call it a safety net and you want it to actually be a safety net, then yeah, it should be a little bit higher, and then I can understand the study hours, and I can understand. Quick, man, for your personal privilege, something I don't know what it is. Yes. Sorry. Um, Point of Jordan. Yes. Point of Jordan. Uh, something that you were. Oh my God. Words. Cut out. Um. I needed to figure out what it was, and now I don't remember. But no, about the language and changing it to what are we thinking about changing it to? Someone. 2.1 or whatever. The thing is, when you first get a 2. Point, if you fall below a 2.0, you get put on financial aid probation. You do not lose your financial aid or academic probation. After you lose your, you're put on academic probation. You get put on financial aid probation. You do not lose your financial aid probation until you violate another semester of that. Therefore, you have three semesters to turn your GPA around before that's a violation, which is actually up to academic code. So I just wanted to violate, point out the academic policy. That was all. Okay. But what I'm, I'm still, sorry. What I'm still saying is if you want it to be a real safety net, make it just a little bit higher so you hit that before you hit anything else. Because if you can hit that at a 2.15 and you have to do study hours, maybe it'll turn you around before you ever have to deal with financial aid. Okay? I, I would suggest it, but that's all I got to say. Thank you. Mr. Gunning? Yeah. Um, you're a very talkative group. <laughs> this is great. Um, my memory might be going. Um, I'm not, at the point of clarification, I thought I heard in the list of the amendment that students with disabilities were being singled out. What did I hear you say? Um, so, that they also had to meet the same requirements? That, no, no, no. no. That, I they know. that they would be held to this, the, they would held to be held to the standards of academic achievement for disability services. That way, because I remember, I recall, um, Dr. Kane saying this, and he left the room, so this really doesn't help me. Um, that if a student is registered with disability services, they are allowed to take lesser credits or have fewer credit hours, but they're still considered full time. So we want to be able to allow them to be eligible. To be eligible. And to be accounted for in this. Okay, that's fine. Because I, if they have less than. As I said, there was so much that I couldn't. I understand. I'm sorry. Track that's one. Fine. You were talking very quickly, and I wasn't. I didn't have anything written in front of me. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Martin? Yes. Thank you for the floor. Uh, Deputy Speaker of Benton Court. Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you all my life story. And uh, <laughs> on second thought, I'm not going to, doing, doing, due to it being irrelevant to Article 3. Uh, Article 3, I feel as though that uh, way back when, when Vice President Costa was talking about self accountability, self responsibility, this is a matter of freedom. and. Uh, if you're in Rhode Island College, you should basically kind of know what you're doing if you're in college. And with that, I'd like to motion to strike Article 3. And I'll ask for a second. Well, we have a motion. Do I have a second? With no second, the motion has been failed and be entertained. Well, I still have the floor, right? Yep. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and with that, I am all set. Thank you, Deputy Speaker Ben Ford. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Secretary Aubrey. Oh, okay. So finally, oh my God, I don't even want to talk about this anymore. I know <laughs> we're going around in circles. So I, I'm just, I'm done talking about this right now. We're not just because we're talking about, we're talking around in circles. Everyone is making their own personal opinions, their own points. The same point that were made on February sixth. So I just want a motion to call to question. Thank you. Who's on the list? Uh, we currently have four people left on the list. Howard Dean, Treasure Bay, you, and Mr. Rob Santuri. So we have a motion to call a question. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second. All those in favor of the motion to call a question, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Abstentions? Yeah. Someone say next. <laughs> well, yeah, it has to be a two-person, so we, we, we have to handle.
I've done this before, guys. This is just to, you know, skip the list and go to a vote. So, if you if you agree with calling the question, please raise your hand and keep it up.
academic affairs comes first. And those people that want to just like linger here on that non-matriculating kind of thing that we don't know about, we just assume that they're great students, but they're really not. They're just hanging around getting a $5,000 stipend semester after semester, and I think that's what this addresses. And you know, I don't think anybody really wanted to talk about you know, that group of people that have been here in the past that have done that, and that's what this will stop. Thank you. Mr. Santuri. Thank you, Deputy Speaker Ben Accord. Am I my last on the list? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm going to make this brief because the dead boss room is starting to smell. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, at this point, you know, I, with this bill, as I said before, I did not support this bill, to start with Article 3 and the original incarnation. I will say this now, though, and I might regret this down the road, but I'll say it now. As the philosopher Jagger once said, can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you get what you need. You can quote Danny Anchor. This, what I'm, what I'm saying right this right now is that you can't always get what you want in life from anything. But, you know, we tried. Four hours on Friday, we tried. It's 10.15. Nobody can say hey, we ain't earning our stipend tonight here. Doing this for three, uh, most of our night tonight has been this for about two hours. I think that Treasurer Day's amendments were great, because they relieved, I would say, 95% of what I, I had wrong with this bill. And I know, like I said, I might regret this in the future, but I'm going to say this right now, I think that as the bill currently stands, I can not have, a, I might, I have my reservations, but I would like to, uh, Tylene said it great, you know, give it a whirl. If it doesn't work out, next year we come back. We say we voted that we get rid of it. I mean, some of you aren't going to be here, but let's just vote on this because we still have to finish actually out of the four and then amend this and then vote on this whole thing. But I just say, and put my support behind this bill as it currently is, as long as it stays this current way, and I yield the floor back to you, Mr. Okay, before I move on to the next person on the list, which is Staff Representative Sarah Hardy, I have something to read here. Dear Mr. Speaker, I am requesting an early leave for tonight's meeting due to suddenly feeling ill. I would like to leave effective immediately if approved by the body. Thank you, Secretary Auger. Motion. I have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? second? I have a second by Representative Allen. All those in, uh, do I have discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. All opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? No. I voted no, sorry. Okay, let the record show there. <laughs> John and John. Okay, uh, so moved. Okay, now I move on to stuff. stuff up. I so just have a really short comment to make. I, I, I wasn't here on February 6th. I had left early at that meeting. And so I didn't know too much about what happened then. But it saddened me actually being a faculty member that you're spending so much time discussing something that is going to help. Uh, you just gave us a number. 26 people, students who will really need the help. And I really can't see why there's so much opposition to this. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Um, with that being the last speaker on the list, we go on to a vote of Article 3 as amended. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions. So moved. And now we are vote to pass. Okay. We move on to a vote to pass a whole dedication to academic success article. Uh, point of objection, Mr. Speaker. Uh, uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, article four still exists, as far as I know. My apologies. Motion to strike Article four. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I have a motion to strike Article four. And I have a second on the table by Representative uh, Allen. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of striking Article 4, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Let's write the show. And abstentions? So moved. Okay, now we'll vote on the policy as a whole to accept it as amended. Any discussion? No, there's no discussion. All, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions. Let the record show that 
Representative Mountain stands. Thank you so much. Any other discussion? 
With no further discussion, all those favor of approving the Greek-like policy, say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Abstentions. Motion passes. Those are in chair abstain. Oh, abstentions? We're in the room. Alright. So, Vice President Costa and Vice, um, Senior Class Representative, Sean Carson, uh, New Business B, Traffic and park, Parking Legislation. That's a motion from Hillary Costa. Who wants to be a second on this oh. before you go to shuffle? Well, second. Yeah, we'll resign it. This is going to be a second. Uh, oh, okay. There's people signed on There's this? like six people. <coughs> All right, so it's a unified second on that. All right. Uh, thank you, Speaker Esquire. Keep this brief. Um, outlined in the report, I have here the minutes from the um, February 7th meeting of the Traffic and Parking Committee. Myself and Deputy Speaker Betancourt are not members of the committee, but we attended anyway to um, convey what had happened regarding Lot C in Parliament and conditions of services successfully. Um, I will not read the minutes for you. That's there for you to read at your earliest convenience. We move on to page two, which details the phases and the points that many people have brought up to us. Instead of making um, like 10 different resolutions regarding each of these, um, I figured that I would make this successive list here that could be a phase-by-phase -phase project of what we want to complete regarding traffic and parking. I'll go over them point by point. Repave Lot B, the, that, which is located, as I state here, adjacent to the track of William Baldwin Nazarian Center. That lot, I've almost twisted my ankle in dozens of times, and the, some of the lines are pretty faded, and I just, it's one of those things where it seems like a no-brainer to me. It might even be on the list to be repaved. I have to go to physical plant with this list. Um, y lot, um, I think we need to make a more accessible, safe and accessible um, track path for it to get to campus because right now it crosses the street and it crosses through a main traffic center where physical plant um, vehicles move. Um, either that or we have a shuttle go to that lot, the shuttle go to that lot on campus. A residence hall sidewalk, um, some people have brought to me more residents that they would like a sidewalk along the Triggs course which would be a more direct uh, path to campus. Um, Parking tips page on the Brick website. This is something that I kind of thought of um, because people keep saying, oh, well, I do this for parking or I do that for parking. And I think that having just kind of a friendly tips, parking tips page on the website saying, if you get to campus at this time, you can park here and you can take the shuttle here or at this time, do something along those lines. And uh, open parking specifications, um, we need to better specify what's open parking at what time or um, which lots aren't open parking at any time. And I think that that needs to be addressed. <coughs> Overnight parking specifications as well. They're, as I state here, an enigma. Nobody knows what the deal is. People um, call the chief of police and say they're leaving their car here, and they tell you it's okay, and you don't need a permit, and the next day you come back and you have a, a ticket on your car. So that's why I have that in there. Um, paint hours and seal out directing traffic counterclockwise. This was under recommendation of <coughs> Traffic and Parking Committee Chair um, Julie Erda. Um, she said that um, it's very accident prone because the space is so small for cars to, to pass by one another and that it really needs to be just a circle that the traffic circles in. Um, repair the speed hump in lot L, um, which is behind the residence halls and the hump itself is behind Thorpe and, Weather, and Weber. Um, student vehicles I've been hearing are in danger of bottoming out and there's damage because the hump is dilapidated. And I think it's in a poorly placed area anyway because I don't think anyone's going to be speeding around this really tight corner that goes past the residence halls. Um, students agree that it, it should, there should be a pump back there, but it's not there and that needs to be better maintained. And finally, I, traffic signage. The sign that details next to the crosswalk, main crosswalk going over College Road is faded. That says that you should stop for the students in the crosswalk and many times um, I know I'm not a resident, but I've had to cross there, and some people are just extremely rude and don't stop for you. And even further, we need to have, um, as Representative Sanchez said, and I'm fielding him into this, um, that we need a sign over by the residence halls also dealing to, detailing to stop for the people in the crosswalks, considering someone who was in a wheelchair got hit, which still blows my mind. Finally, in the last sentence I detail here, with the approval of student parliament, this report and project are to be completed in phases. Signed, Hillary Costa, Ryan Benford, Gianna Auger, Caitlin Burke, Tyler Dean, Shannon Carlson, and Thomas Lima use an invisible pen. So if any, of those people, <laughs> if any of those people would like to speak on that before we go to a vote, I would yield the floor to them. Thank you. Nice work, everybody. <coughs> the rest of the committee, basically, you can say. Representative Dean. Uh, one thing, I know this is the final point thing is, I think we should shift our attention away from the lost seas since faculty wouldn't make uh, compromise with us to let us use it at certain hours, so they 
Wait, what's your question? Lot C. Yeah, lot C. What about <laughs> 10 years? I think we should just abandon that altogether since students won't even get to use that lot. So, you could strike the whole thing of giving them the. Yeah, I would say that. I'd say let the college deal with that since it's for their faculty. All right, fair enough. Point. Is that friendly? <laughs> I accept that as friendly. Everybody else accepts that as friendly. Absolutely. It's not friendly per se. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, any further discussion on this on this uh, report? No further discussion. All those in favor of the report say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Extensions. Much passed. We're gonna move on to a leave actually. Representative freshman representative <coughs> Sherry had to leave because he was sick. I get a motion to second. 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 Motion. Representative Santeri, second from Representative Gordon. Any discussion on this leave? No further discussion. All those in favor of the leave say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Abstention. Any discussions? Motion passes. We're gonna move on to new business C student. Student Bill of Rights discussion. President Pekia. Just to make you mad, I'm going to talk really slow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go on a wild hunt and say that nobody has amendments to this, right? Am I correct or not? You may be correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. Although, is this going to be changed? I know you said it's changed the, on the website from last year. The handbook is correct. So if, you look okay. at, if you're looking at the Student Bill of Rights in the handbook, whether you're looking at the physical copy of the handbook or the copy of the handbook online, okay. That's correct, but there's, I just recall when uh, Vice President Costa had mentioned something to me that I think there's a separate link on the Student Life website for the Bill of Rights, which is just completely different that is not linked to the handbook, and that probably has not been updated, okay. so that's what needs to be fixed. The only thing that's in here that I would change is that it's the SCGT <coughs> system, which I don't think exists at all anymore, so I'll just go over myself. <laughs> um, that's it. Uh, just a quick question. Um, in Article 2 under the Student Bill of Rights, it mentions the Exodus yearbook. Do we need that in there? Oh, yeah, that's so, probably changed. Uh, so that's that's why, uh, we'll strike any irrelevant Student Bill of Rights. Vice President Costa? Yeah, those, those changes will be in the last This is the one that Barbara sent me. Vice President Costa, you have the floor. Yes. Okay, so I brought this up to my, my Public Relations Committee in our meeting this week because it is a duty of the Public Relations Committee. And um, what I was basically looking to do was to just make sure it went somewhere because I remember um, Vice President Emeritus George Bissell had made all these corrections that the two were just stated. If you want to see those corrections in their entirety, I have post posted the page in the 2011-2012 uh, minutes with a blue post-it. You flip right to the page. So, <laughs> sorry. So, um, that alleviates all of our problems, and anything that was irrelevant at the time or has changed since has been amended. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vice President Costa. I'm pretty sure we're going to need them. Because those, those, those changes have to be made. Any other discussion regarding the Bill of Rights? So that's the same representative. It's now Anchor TV, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. It's beautiful. <laughs> Any further discussion? With no further discussion, there's actually no vote on this, so we're just going to move on to updates and remarks. I'm going to show you up here. Gary Pepper, do you have any remarks? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I have no remarks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Faculty update. Good evening, Pat. Uh, Renown College and Central Falls School, School District have formed a star partnership, which will also be student to student, faculty to faculty, and probably, uh, would, if ideally, would involve uh, people from the student government. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Yeah, I know you don't want to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Every uh, two years, the college conducts the National Survey of Student Engagement. It's a survey that goes out to a group of seniors and a group of freshmen. So if you're in either, and that's by credit hour, we do that analysis by credit hour. So if you're in one of those two, group, two groups, you may have received an email from uh, Nessie. And I think the subject line is something along the lines of tell us your experiences about Rick or something along that lines. If you get one of those, if you're selecting one of those groups, please go online and fill out the survey. It will probably only take you about 25 minutes. It's not that difficult to do. But the college really needs the feedback to um, you know, be able to evaluate some of our programs and some of our initiatives and the kinds of things that we're doing. Uh, hopefully everybody's going to the game on Saturday, NCAA tournament round two, group of 32, playing at home or Seville State. Tickets are on sale right now in uh, athletics for what, two dollars? Are they two dollars still for students? Two dollars for students. And uh, you get one rig and one non rig. In the show, it's still running, but we're, you know, it's going to end here right in the beginning of April. Our contract with the, you know, we're, it really was just designed.
like to be in inclement weather. We, we uh, added the GPS feature, so I don't know if anybody's checked that out online to see where the yes, shuttle is on awesome. campus. It's really cool. Does it still look like a race car, though, or does it look like yeah, Because they changed the icon from the bus to a race car. Yeah. Check it out. Let's take a look at my email that I sent previously about that. Um, Dr. Penfield and I are it's, we're working with some other people to try to figure out um, maybe making some test runs uh, from the sh uh, of the shuttle from campus to Stop and Shop. Did we talk about this last time? Yeah. Yes. No, we, did we talk about that? Oh, we talked. So, and so the e-board knows. But um, we're, and we're still trying to figure out exactly what dates and what times to do that. But once those are set, we'll make that announcement broadly to students and hopefully students who live in the residence halls in particular that might sort of work out for them, especially if they don't have transportation. But we, it's just something we want to kind of pilot for a little while, maybe like a week or so this year, so that when we go come back next year and we're doing the shuttle again, we have a better sense of whether that's a service we should provide, how often, and what seems to work, how long will it take, all that sort of stuff. That concludes my remarks. Thank you, Dr. King. We're going to move on to our alumni representative, Baron Eggerson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm going to try to be as quick as I possibly can. I had a copy, so it was possible. First of all, amazing, amazing with the Whipple resolution. I was going to say, Vice President Costa, amazing. I doubt you. You are a queen. That was phenomenal. We went from like an idea to we're getting furniture there, which is wonderful. Secondly, so at our next meeting, which is on the 20th, I'm going to pass this out so you can be prepared. 27th. The 27th. Ooh, I get three weeks off. So we're going to be debating. Um, initiating a survey, and the purpose of this survey is going to be to gauge um, addressing the issues that we may not have touched upon with the Defense of Academic Standards or Dedication, whatever it is, DASA. So, <laughs> what I'm trying to say with that is we've identified that, you know what, we think there might be a problem, but the question is whether or not that problem is unique to students involved in organizations who receive stipends or if they're unique to the campus body as a whole and whether or not students involved on campus are aware of the resources available to them, and also whether or not there are indeed special needs for those students involved on campus that require them additional resources in order to complete their academics. Whether that need actually exists determines whether or not we take next steps. The whole purpose of it is to engage in positive feedback and helping people graduate while at the same time not really trying to engage in the penalties. The language is going to be changed because it mentions, you know, DASA or whatever, not passing, because as they wrote it, I thought people were going to mutiny. So, <laughs> so me and Representative Taylor, what we want to do is we want to build a survey in order to gauge whether or not students who are involved are missing, are missing certain resources that help them cope with the stresses of work and life, and what those resources are, how we can help them succeed by providing them, and providing the best route in the most affordable, feasible, and academically correct way in order to help everyone achieve success. That's the gist of it. Um, we're going to discuss it, and hopefully I, I can help with the drafting process. Hopefully Dr. King can help me, and because I'm just so used to surveys and stuff like that now with the stupid thesis. So look forward to that. Yay. Done. Thank you, alumni representative Barry Nixon. We're going to move on to appointments, resignation, and vacancies. Madam President. Thank you. I have um, one resignation, uh, Hannah Cashman from SOC. Um, I have three appointments, Brandon Medeiros to the Finance Commission, uh, Nisa Sorensen to Student Organizations Committee and also Nicholas Rose. And I ask that they be accepted with unanimous consent. All those appointments have unanimous consent? All right, so on to issues of parliament members. People got issues, okay. <laughs> 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 Did you come back just to say mm -hmm. one? Representative Beckford. Yes. I, I already reserved. I'm the deputy. Okay, you can move on. Oh! oh. 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 As you guys are also <laughs> Santuri. Uh, and then we're in. Bancourt, knock us off. I am a little thrown off. I just want to send out, uh, to just take a step, step back from everything <coughs> involving the de dedication and academic success. Um, and just really send out two congratulations. Uh, the first, I just want to congratulate Travis. Because um, for someone who really stuck with his opinion throughout this whole thing, I, I really respect that. because. I don't think if it wasn't for Travis that we would have seen this pass today, to be honest with you. Um, you know, he, 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 stuck, he stuck, true to his, uh, stuck true to his opinion and, uh, and, and, really, and really said some stuff today that I think was uh, a concise decision. Um, and then the, the other one, I just want to congratulate everyone in this room uh, for being able to come to a concise decision on this because if we can... Uh, you know, take a look at an issue that affects us. <coughs> and 
we can take apart all those personal differences and put everything aside and really come to a decision on something that realistically affects all of us as student leaders. And I think we can really achieve anything in student government. Um, you know, it, we, we, it just show that we can work together and we can work together to come to a, a great decision that really affects uh, student body. So, I'll leave you guys with that. And you're here. <laughs> On to treasure day. I just want to remind everyone that Macklemore tickets are available at the Welcome and Info Center. Um, they're, as long as the Welcome and Info Center is open, I don't know what it, their deal is over spring break, so I'm sorry. It's $10 for RIC students, $20 for non RIC students. So if you buy two tickets, it's $30, just to clarify. Macklemore will be on April 11th. I believe the time, start time of the concert is 8 p.m. It'll be held at the rec center. And if you want to know who we secured as our opener, it was D1. I don't know anything about them. However, I'm super excited that they're coming. Um, other than that, just encourage you to buy tickets. Encourage you to get more people out there. It's a really big event. We've already sold almost 700 tickets. I think that's a really big improvement from every other concert we've ever had. So as a treasurer of student community government, I actually, for the first time, am proud to have a concert here. So, that's all I have to say. Matt, <laughs> like, that's big. Bar. Okay. Yeah. Can you just give me your name? Eric. Eric. And can you? That's Belmyra. Okay. okay. And Milka. Yeah, I know, I know Milka. <laughs> they have been here. We have been sitting in chairs <laughs> all night. <laughs> they have been staying behind cameras watching us argue with each other and babble and rant. And I think they deserve a really big round. Good night, Carlin. Oh, 